Welcome to Pocono International Raceway. We are live with you on TNN, and because of a threat of rain late in the day, we won't have our usual pre-race. Let's go right to the starting grid. Ken Schrader is on the pole. Mark Martin's Ford is alongside. Bobby Hamilton, third. That Chevy Ford Pontiac in the front three spots. He's flanked by Ricky Rudd in row two. Jeff Gordon and Jeff Bodine in the third row. Darrell Waltrip expects to go all the way today with those sore ribs. And Rusty Wallace in row five. Morgan Shepard and Bobby Labonte, Derek Cope and Greg Sachs occupy the sixth row today. Jimmy Spencer and Dale Jarrett, Sterling Marlin and Joe Nemechek takes you back through 16th. Hut Strickland and Kyle Petty, last week's winner. Brett Bodine and Bobby Hillen, that's the 10th row. Ted Musgrave, Ward Burton, Michael Waltrip, and Dale Earnhardt back in 24th. Bill Elliott and Dick Trickle, Terry Labonte and Todd Bodine, 28th. John Andretti and Jimmy Horton in the Hooters car this week. Rick Mast and Dave Marcus with sore ribs from last week's crash. Poncho Carter and rookie Robert Presley. Jeremy Mayfield and Ricky Craven back in the 18th row. Jeff Burton along with Mike Wallace, Steve Grissom, and Lake Speed. Those are provisional starters. Randy LaJoy and Chuck Bound. Doug French was the only car not to qualify. As they come around, turn number three. Here's your AutoZone race analysis for today. Brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, best parts in auto parts. 42 cars in the field for the 200 lap, 500 mile distance. Alan Kulwicki holds the record for this race set in 1992 at 144 miles per hour. We'll ride along today with the pole sitter. In Bud One, the uh, Bud One ground ship, if you will. On you stop, Eric, so just get to uh, space. You get settled out here. Let's let us know how you're like. Kenny Schrader trying to end a 120 race victory drought. And right alongside on the front row, Mark Martin and the Valvoline Ford Thunderbird of Jack Roush. Behind the GMC Jimmy safety truck. Those are the drivers you'll ride with today here on TNN. Welcome to our live telecast, everybody. I'm Mike Joy, Buddy Baker, and Ernie Irvin alongside as Randy the Joy comes on to pit road, makes a stop, and, and goes back out to join the field. So next time by, we'll look for a green flag. Let's check quickly down on pit road where Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton are today. Well, one thing you guys have to realize out there in TV land, these guys got no practice on this racetrack here yesterday. Now, the bottom line is they're going to go out there. They're going to shake these cars down. Now, you're going to hear a lot about spring rubbers and a lot of chassis changes on the first pit stop. The bottom line is some of these guys have four rubbers in all the springs all the way around. Some of them will be taking them out, putting them in all day long. They'll be making chassis changes on the first stop. Glenn Jarrett, what do you got? Well, Randy, a lot of concern, as always, here at Pocono is fuel mileage. I've polled most of the guys here in the top 20. Want to see how they do. The two best so far, Bobby Labonte, number 18, Darrell Waltrip. They figure they can go around 38, 39 laps. The guys to least, Michael Waltrip, uh, Rusty Wallace, and Mark Martin, can only figure in about 32, 33 laps. That may change after the first caution or first pit stop. Ernie Irvin, what kind of race do you expect today? I tell you, I think it's going to be exciting. You know, probably some of the things that's going to make the race exciting is people haven't had no practice. So now we're going to find out how good they were uh, when they showed up. And let's, uh, you know, play a a hard fact on the crew chiefs now to make the cars do, do real good. You bet, buddy. Well, Mike, the fans at home are fixing to see one of the greatest things in all of auto racing, five wide down the front straightaway, going towards a two-lane first corner. So you guys are in for a great race here today. The longest front stretch in Winston Cup racing, 3,750 feet is the green flag wave. And we're underway here at Pocono. Schrader got a real good jump on that start. Look at him, six abreast. <laughs> Oh, boy. Ooh, Bobby Hamilton got in front of Mark Martin, and they made contact as they went into turn number one. You see Joe Nemechek way up high there. That's not the place to be. There's no rubber down on that part of the racetrack. Very slick up there. He's wanting to get down low because the preferred line around this racetrack right now is right around the bottom through the corner. Mark Martin caught up high, and Jeff Gordon takes advantage of number 24 underneath. This is for third place behind Ken Schrader. Now, Darrell Waltrip. Did not get off to a good start as Dave Marcus works around the outside of Waltrip. Mike, Darrell Waltrip is a very comfortable race car driver, and something's wrong with this car. He wouldn't be dropping back like that right now. He may have a plug wire off or something like that because he's definitely off the pace. Waltrip heard at Charlotte, expects to go all the way today. Now, Martin down to the inside behind the front three is Ken Schrader, Bobby Hamilton, and Jeff Gordon lead a three-way fight for fourth place. They better hook up quick because Bobby Hamilton's right up under the pole setter, Kenny Schrader. And you see Jeff Gordon there in third spot. The rest of them better get in line and catch those guys because you can use the draft to get away from other cars here. 
Darrell Waltrip dropped from seventh to last on the first lap of this race. Fourth place, now it's Mark Martin, Ricky Rudd in fifth, and Rusty Wallace in sixth, battling Jeff Bodine. Bodine's car bounced off the wall in practice just before qualifying. They've only had three laps of practice all weekend here. Across the tunnel turn, there are your three leaders, and there's the separation back to that next battle. But you can see the cars that are following people through there. You can follow a car through there and kind of gauge a little bit faster time through the corner by watching the car in front of you. So the advantage right now is not Kenny Schrader. You see Bobby Hamilton really eating him up there, but I think you're happy just pulling away from that next group. Three-car breakaway, two Chevrolets and the Pontiac of Hamilton. Little gap back to Mark Martin, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bonine, Rusty Wallace. And Derek Cope, well up among the top ten. Field hustles back off into turn number one. Here's Glenn Jarrett, Darrell Waltrip's pit. And Darrell is going to bring his Western Auto Chevrolet in, Mike. They lost a cylinder on the start of the race. They do not know why. They are hopeful, praying that it is nothing but a plug wire. But they are down a cylinder. Going to have to bring him in, check him out. Waltrip is on pit road. Field across the tunnel turn. And let's go back to Glenn. And Walter brings the car in. You can hear the engine misfiring, and there's a lot of smoke. It's more than a plug wire, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of smoke. I can smell oil smoke coming out of it, so he's got a serious, serious problem. Man, what a terrible break. He had such a good car. was looking forward to his first full run. He has shut it off. We'll try to get a word with him a little later on. Schrader has led every lap so far. Bobby Hamilton and Jeff Gordon trying to check out on the field. They are not as close together as they look from this long shot. Yeah, but Mark Martin sitting back here in fourth place right now has a very strong race car, and he's the type of driver to sit back here and bide his time a little bit, find somebody he feels comfortable running in traffic with, and he'll make a move back on this front bunch. Randy Pemberton. Hey, just to let you guys know, the 28 car has uh, radioed in. Dale Jarrett has. He has a bad vibration. Just a quick note, we'll keep an eye on Dale. Again, remember, there was no practice at all yesterday as he works under Greg Sachs, the Kendall Oil Pontiac. And right with him, Sterling Marlin. Well, you see Greg Sachs moving out there. Here comes Jarrett. Oh, three wide going down into the flat corner. Somebody has to give here. Sterling Marlin took his the nose of his Chevrolet out of that Whoa. fight, and he's into Jarrett. Man, he's in trouble. Who is into the wall. <laughs> Caution is out. Sterling got in the back of him right as they get entered in the flat corner coming towards the front straightaway there. Man, what bad luck that guy has. Yeah, I tell you, you know, um, it's kind of one of them racing deals. You know, Dale had went, made made his move into the corner and uh, looked like he had got a little bit loose getting in there and uh, ended up uh, Sterling got into him. Rear end is bent way over. You see Greg Sachs drove her in there. He's checking up just a little bit. Sterling's coming in. He makes contact right here, gets the back wheels real light, and he turns sideways and runs backwards up towards the wall. For the second week in a row, the Robert Yates Haviland Ford ooh, is into the concrete very early in the race. Three laps last week at Dover, four laps here at Pocono. TNN Motorsports live coverage from Pocono, Pennsylvania continues after this. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft, making the world a very cool place. By Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil, add more life to your car, take it to the star. By Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Splitfire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more till you use it. Welcome back to Pocono. We're under a crash, uh, under the caution for a crash by Dale Jarrett at turn number three. Let's, uh, a number of the cars made pit stops. First to Glenn Jarrett. We're standing by in the four pit right now, and Dale Jarrett has come over to uh, crew chief Tony Glover. Of course, Sterling Marlin, we showed, had gotten into the back of Dale. He came over and asked him to ask Sterling just basically what he was thinking about. Uh, Dale's a little upset right now. He does not want to talk to us. But uh, he basically asked uh, Tony Glover what, uh, what Sterling was thinking about. This is uh, second week in a row, like Mike said, that Dale had been taken out by someone else's uh, actions or misdeeds, however you want to term it. But, uh, 
honestly, uh, he's my brother. It doesn't matter who he is. There's not much point in that having uh, those things happening this early in the race. There's 500 miles to go. I, I certainly understand how he feels. While, the, uh, while we were away, a couple of uh, cars that qualified pretty well made pit stops. Bobby Labonte, who started 10th, uh, made a pit stop, changed all four tires, and made a major adjustment on the chassis. He was very, very loose. Kyle Petty also came in last week's winter, and he made a major adjustment on the chassis. Most of them adjusting the track bar. This is a new tire that you're running here at, at Pocono. It's got more stagger in it. The cars are loose. They didn't get much time to set them up. Randy? Well, I'm glad you answered that question as to where Dale Jarrett went. We were here in a flash. The car was sitting in the garage area, no one in it, smoke billowing from it. Uh, Glenn and uh, everybody out there, it's a uh, rear end all knocked out of it, of course. Uh, they're going to have to tra change the drive shaft as well as probably the trailing arms. Uh, fuel cells pretty much nailed in on it. Uh, just this team just shaking their heads. They cannot believe the luck that they have had out here in Winston Cup racing this year. Upstairs. That car has completed five laps in two weeks. Man. And again, in both cases, because of contact from the rear. It was clear from the replay that Dale Jarrett entered turn three slower than the car in front of him that he had checked up. Not clear what caused the contact. Well, Mike, what he had to do, Greg Sachs drove in on the outside and took the preferred line, so he checked up just a little bit. And Sterling had a full head of steam, and he cracked him in the back end. I mean, I'm sure Sterling didn't mean to do it, but he did get in the back of him, turn him right around. We'll look for green this time by after the first caution of the day coming out as they completed four laps here. Starter Doyle Ford telling him to hold it down for the restart, and now we are back to green. Jeff Gordon got quite a start and gave Bobby Hamilton a start taking second spot. Well, Mike, you can't pass on the inside, but Bobby Ham Hamilton, for some reason, well, he got the spot back. Uh, no point in explaining what happened there because he's back now. You see uh, Gordon looking to the bottom side, though. Hamilton is at a little bit high there coming out of the corner. I'll say down the back straightaway. He's going to lose several spots getting into turn two. Look at them line up on Bobby Hamilton. They'll, they'll all get in a row right now. And, uh, Bobby will have to come in uh, in about fourth and fifth. Boy, it's a shark pool out there when somebody gets the least little bit out of line, isn't it? It is. And, um, you know, later into the day, we won't have that problem. But, um, you know, you can really watch these guys getting into uh, turn three. And it's amazing that, you know, you're all single file now. Now, Saxon and Sterling Marlin side by side. Yeah, Turn Sterling's three. there this time. Uh, Sachs drove in hard, but he's going to lose some spots there, and everybody's dropping in behind Sterling down the front straightaway. That's Hutt Strickland in the 26, the green car there. Just to find behind him is uh, Musgraves. Uh, give us a great race. Finished third last week in Dover. Hutt Strickland looked way inside of Sterling Marlin, and they line back up for turn one. Right down on the apron. Against the curbing is Hot Strickland. Well, who will Musgrave go with? That may determine. Oh, they're back Ooh. in line. Single file. <laughs> Sax is flying, man. He's running well. He pulls back to the inside, trying to get that inside line back. Uh, it, looked, it looked like um, Sax actually pulled to the inside to try to make sure Teddy couldn't get down under him. And, uh, you know, once he gets in line, then, then they'll all run about the same speed. Oh, here comes Strickland. He wants Sterling Marlin's spot. Boy, is that car it. strong across that short shoot, Ernie. Yeah, it really is. You know, uh, maybe the gear rush is really uh, a little better than Ooh, Sterling. Sterling's back under him again. Yeah. That's oh. like <laughs> We've seen this move before. Yes, we have. I tell you what, it, you get a little bit out of the groove here offline just a little bit, and if you can lose five, six spots without any trouble. Here comes Musgrave. Puts the Family Channel 4 down underneath Greg Sachs, who had poked out a line looking for Hutt Strickland. They get back single file before they get in the corner. And Bobby Hamilton trying to move back up underneath Ricky Rudd's tied four. Well, you see just behind them, moving in there at the number two of Wallace. And uh, Rusty Wallace runs his racetrack very heady. He's very smart. And this area right in this part of the racetrack is like a road course. And I don't have to tell you how good he is on those. Boy, Greg Sachs is now moving on the outside of Brett Bodine. Earnhardt trying to pass on the outside. He'll get the Attaboy Award if he pulls that one off through that corner. Looks like he's going to pull it off, to tell you the truth. He's, he's really got the preferred line coming out of the corner. Now the 11 car actually out accelerates the, the 40 car. Looked like Earnhardt was going to make it, but it did. Uh, you, know, you really have to really have a good shot coming off of uh, 
turn three uh, to have a good straightaway speed. Zach says he's going to make it outside work whether it works or not. You see yeah. right there, he's losing spot after spot. But that can be because the car is not able to stay on the bottom of the racetrack right. and he's using as much racetrack as he can. I had to tell the people, you know, we, we actually look at this racetrack. There's a, everybody looks at it a different way, but we actually look at turn one, turn two, and turn three. All and right, Greg Sachs battles Todd Bodine here. There's Jimmy Spencer in the picture, 23. And moving up, Bobby Hillen, Bobby Hillen. in 77, the Jasper Engines car. It's good to see them on a good run. Yes. You back up front. Kenny Schrader has led every lap so far, but now his Hendrick stablemate Jeff Gordon closes in on the rear bumper. We'll be right back with you live here on TNN. There are the leaders here at Pocono. Ken Schrader leads, but he and Jeff Gordon swapped the lead back and forth while we were in break. Here's the first pass. Well, Jeff moving to the inside there on Schrader and makes it look pretty easy, but just after he passes him, he picks up a direct push in this car, and it really gets bad. That happened coming out of turn number one. Here, Schrader will make the pass back. This happened while we were away. That tells you what team means when the race starts. <laughs> there is no team. <laughs> and up front now, Bobby Hamilton wants to lead. Ken Schrader says, I don't think so. And he's definitely not on Schrader's team. <laughs> right. And there's Richard Petty. He's probably adjusting his hat in the pits right now. This has got to make him feel great. Bobby Hamilton's been up front most of the year. Look at this car really go down the straightaway. He's riding a the rocket. They Watch really him. do have a really good motor in that car. You're in Kenny Schrader's car. You can see Jeff Gordon, too. He was way wide. He's going to lose some spots because the car is not able to stay on the bottom of the racetrack. Looks like Rusty Wallace is down under Jeff now. Going to get into the tunnel turn. Here they are. Here's that battle for third place. Huh? Wallace is trying to bring Mark Martin along with him. Now, Rusty will probably try. Well, he's going to wait till the front straightaway. That's a pretty tight corner to make it real wide. He's diving as I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coach Baker. That tells you what I know about Rusty <laughs> Wallace is waiting on anybody. All right, you're in Mark Martin's car. And Sterling Marlin has caught the lead pack. Well, Mike, this is a classic example. When the chassis goes away at this racetrack, you can be running so well down the straightaways it does not mean a thing. It's all corner here. Yeah, you could be Hercules down the straightaway, but you got to get through that corner. Well, what's happened to Jeff Gordon's car, Glenn? Uh, Mike, they're trying to figure it out. I talked to Ray Everham. He's talking to Jeff now. This racetrack is so big, they only have communication with them, good communication as they come down the front straightaway. Their radios won't reach back to the other side, so Ray's talking to him. He said that Jeff told him all at once the car went, just went to junk. He didn't know what had happened, and uh, Ray told him back on the radio, said, okay, just take it easy, cool it for a while. Maybe it'll come back. They feel like that he, uh, on that charge to the front, he might have just overheated the tires. We'll see. Now, is there something hang What's that waving off Bobby Hamilton's bumper? That's probably the air. Oh. He's running so well, it's probably <laughs> it's or, vapor. <laughs> or is that... Remember on the first lap going into turn one, he and Mark Martin got together. They did touch a little bit. It's just yes. a piece. That's nothing. That That's won't bother anybody. That's not a black flag there, folks. Fiberglass was yeah. part of the rear bumper Small cover. Piece of going into turn one, he had passed Mark Martin. Mark got a nose into him right there as he made a little contact. Well, remember Charlotte. Charlotte... Uh, Kenny Schrader was running awful good and um, broke a motor or something. Um, he's running good again here. Him and Bobby are two of the best cars. Now for fourth place, Mark Martin and Sterling Marlin. There's Jeff Gordon right back at them. And there's a gap behind them. Mike, if Jeff is really pushing as bad as he looked like he was, the best thing he can do is stay with traffic like that and just drive along behind them and let it loosen them up in the windstream there. Wow. Ooh, Morgan Shepard. Feeding time in the aquarium. Down to the inside, it. and uh, Black is back for oh. Bill Elliott. Now, you see Bill Elliott check up there. If he hadn't, he'd run right into Todd Bodine and had a chain reaction there. Elliott's back in uh, Batman Black this week with the 94 car. There's a whole line of cars right there. They're all running about the same speed. Schrader says, I want to lead as many laps as I can. He goes back under Hamilton, takes the lead away again. Look at Rusty Wallace coming in the picture there, though. That black car does not like to run third, I can tell you that. 
Penny's cars run well here. Last year, Wally Dollebeck led this race driving number 43. I think Richard Petty's cars run well most places. They have a lot of problems, uh, you know, in pits and stuff uh, various times this year. But that race car has been very, very uh, competitive all year. Here's your Napa running order. Napa, we keep America running. We'll show you how they're running. Here at Pocono, 17 of 200 laps are complete. 500 miles of scheduled distance. Threat of rain late in the day. But uh, we've been assured that we'll get at least halfway and then some. Well, they asked me who was going to win this race today, and I said, Rusty Wallace, uh, that's going out on a limb. But, boy, that car <laughs> is working now. It's a pretty big limb. Well, yeah. you, buddy. You always go out on a limb. <laughs> that's no thing. sapling you're going out yeah. on, you know. Well, they asked me in the, in the meeting this morning, folks. <laughs> He's there just ahead of the 43 of Bobby Hamilton. Ken Schrader leads, Rusty Wallace is second, Bobby Hamilton third, and Sterling Marlin in the four car looking for the third spot and he overtakes Bobby Hamilton going off into turn number two over the tunnel. TNN Motorsports live coverage, you just can't get any closer. We'll continue after this. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. Kenny Schrader leads here, and Rusty Wallace wants that lead. Sterling Marlin, that car has been a rocket as it's come up through the field. He and Wallace both. Rusty started eighth. Sterling started way back in 15. Mike, we're riding with Mark Martin right now, coming out of turn two. This race car is so good. He was out of the frame just a second ago. Now he's moved back into contention here. He's running this race the way you have to run it, make adjustments on the pit stop to win a race. I thought you picked Mark to win the race this morning. Okay, since he's coming <laughs> up, that'll work. <laughs> I'll I could be wrong. Hey, just I'll change, you guys. Pick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Ernie, you were in the meeting. Uh, I didn't hear, ever hear him say Rusty. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, you see Jeff Gordon. He's following these first six cars right here. Now, just a second ago, he was complaining about the car, but it, it looks like he's coming back in just a little bit. You see him back in there. Oh, well, Rusty got loose coming out of three and then got into Schrader after Schrader got a little loose. Run straight away. The lead oh, may change Kenny. hands here. Oh, no, nope. They dropped back in. Not this time. That turn three, that's a tough corner. It really is. You know, you, you really have to have a real good shot of that corner coming off the corner and able, able to do that. Here comes Sterling um, by the by Rusty. They're going to be side by side getting into the tunnel turn, and um, somebody's going to have to give there. Sterling got up under him coming out of that corner there, Ernie, and, and you could see Rusty's car get loose coming out, and he yep. had to go up higher on the racetrack to catch it, and that gives Sterling second place. Didn't you pick him too this morning? No. <laughs> anyway, here we go. <laughs> All right. Schrader has the lead, but they've been knocking on the door. Sterling Marlin is the yellow car, the Kodak Chevrolet. Right behind him, the Miller Ford of Rusty Wallace and the STP Pontiac of Bobby Hamilton, all chasing the Budweiser Chevy of Schrader. And here comes Jeff Gordon. He's got by Mark Martin. So uh, you see these two cars. I mean, that happens here. A lot of times you get in that outside groove and that car will take off on you. And it'll take you a couple of laps to get everything running again on yourself, not the car. I tell you, the draft really makes a big effect here. And, you know, especially when somebody gets up, up under somebody coming out of turn one. They're, they're like Jeff, now. Just Jeff like that. got in there and, and slid up a little bit. Now Mark's probably going to get the pin position. But before when Rusty did, somebody got up on his bump, as Sterling did, and that made him loose. And it just uh, slows him down, and you're slow down the whole back straightaway until you can get into that tunnel turn, and then you make it a left, and then you're back up to speed. For the lead, Sterling Marlin. Wow. I'm telling you, that car is going across that short shoot. Now watch Schrader. He'll get back under him. These guys love to race. I tell you, there's nothing better than having a good race car at Pocono because you can change the lead three times in one lap here. Now, one thing that's not readily apparent from what you're seeing or even what we hear sitting here at the racetrack is that these cars don't necessarily run in top gear all the way around this super speedway. I tell you, good thing you put that, brought that up. But, um, you know, basically everybody, the majority of the cars are shifting today. They, they have a Jericho transmission, and what they're doing is about the start finish line or a little further down, they shift into high gear. We're going into turn one, they'll downshift to third gear. They'll run third gear, most of the cars, all the way back around to the start finish line. Some of the cars are actually running a different gear ratio. 
they'll shift about the start finish line, downshift into one, and then shift again into fourth about the middle of the back straightaway, and then downshift again getting into turn two, and then run third gear back to the start finish line. That's the spotter telling Kenny Schrader is a car inside him. That was Rusty Wallace who takes over second spot. So for some of these drivers, Ernie, it's not a super speedway. They drive this like it's a road course with all left turns. That's basically what it is. You know, Buddy Becker was saying that today. And it's, it's a road course, but it's got all left turns. And um, it's, a, it's a really unique racetrack. And when you get, to, you get a car here and you really like to run, uh, it is a lot of fun. It's a different type of road course, but it's a real fast road course. You're inside Schrader's car there. You can see it move high on the corner there. Going into turn one, he loses the position there uh, for fourth place. Or no, that was for second place. You can see Schrader go in the corner and just wash way out. Now, that's what happens here a lot of times. You'll have a car that works for 10, 15 laps, and all of a sudden you'll get a push or a loose condition, and all of a sudden you'll drop back and you'll think, what in the world? And all of a sudden the track will come back to you again. That's why you see cars look real strong and look like they're off the pace and then real strong again. That's what happened to Jeff Gordon. Got to the front, car drifted back. Now he's on the march back toward the front again. 24 laps are complete. Sterling Marlin is the leader and he is trying to drive away. We'll be right back. 26 laps complete at Pocono. Sterling Marlin is taken off into his own time zone here. Here's how the Winston Cup points look coming in here. Brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. Sterling 100 points behind Dale Earnhardt in the quest for the cup. Jeff Gordon just six points back of Sterling. Mark Martin in fourth. And Ted Musgrave just a point away from his Jack Roush teammate in fifth. Wow. wow. Schrader was loose off of turn two, three. Ernie, you got to stay still in there. You just about hit me with your elbow there <laughs> yeah. when he got sideways. <laughs> Here comes Hutt Strickland trying to get the spot away from Freighter on the bottom side. He checks up. He said, not yet. I got a pretty good race car, and he's not going to take any foolish moves right there. An early and perhaps unscheduled pit stop for Ricky Rudd in the tied Ford. Well, Mike, you know it's a guess for everybody as far as setup right now. And if you're a little bit off, it's better to come in and fix it right now and get on fresh tires and get back out there and make some time. Here's Glenn. Well, Ricky Rudd has brought the Tide Ford in, and most guys, we're hearing them on the radio, guys, they're talking about tires. They all want different tires. A couple of them are going to make some chassis adjustments. Of course, this will be a four-tire change. And as I said earlier, this is a new tire. They had no idea how it was going to do under race conditions. They didn't know how to exactly set the chassis. They got no practice, so they're having to learn during the race. Four tires and fuel, that's all Rudd's down and away. We're going to go back down to Mark Martin's pit in a minute here. He seems to have lost radio communication. They're going to try to get him another earpiece. I'm watching him tape it on the uh, the long stick that they used to clean the radiator and hand him a drink of water with, So, uh, or the one they used to hand him the water with. We're going to see what the problem is. Mark should be in in just a second. His teammate Ted Musgrave is in right now as Ricky Rudd comes back up to speed. 29 laps complete as green flag pit stops begin. Well, you see Ricky Rudd's a lap down right now. If caution comes out, man, he's in big trouble because Sterling has got by him. Now, one thing that can happen to Sterling Marlin, he probably feels that this car is perfect right now. Everybody else is going to adjust on their cars, and if he thinks he's right, everybody else makes a decision to make a bunch of chassis changes. He may not be the fastest car after they stop. Sterling started 15th. There is his progression to the front at 29 laps. He has led five races this year, and they've all been on the big tracks. Daytona, Darlington, Talladega, Charlotte, and now Pocono. To Pocono, is that what he's going to call it? I guarantee you, he's won on the racetracks that start with D, so he's going to call it the Pocono, probably. But I tell you, Sterling Marlin has a very, very... Oh, these guys are killing me up there, folks. <laughs> anyway. Ken Schrader <laughs> and Mark Martin are on pit road. Let's go to Glenn. Well, as I said, watch uh, Schrader and Martin. Uh, look like they're changing positions coming down pit road there. Mark Martin does have a radio problem. He cannot hear crew chief Steve Neal, but he can hear the spotter, and the spotter can hear Steve. So it's having to kind of relay the communications. He is, they are giving him an extra earpiece. He's going to try to change it himself if he gets a caution. But uh, other than that, Mark radioed in. He thought that the car was probably okay. They just wanted to try tires. There is no chassis adjustment. Tires, fuel, and a new earpiece. He's away. About 20.5 seconds for both of them. They came in together, so between 20 and 21 seconds. Pretty good stop for both teams. Now, it looked like they made an adjustment on Kenny Schrader's car, buddy. It wasn't the normal jacking bolt adjustment in the rear. Well, they went down on the right rear. 
which is the is a Panar bar adjustment. Now we got Sterling Marlin going to pit right now. And here, uh, Randy's got that pit. Well, Tony Glover and the guys waiting for Sterling to come down pit road. 65 miles an hour on pit road today, about 4,400 RPMs in second gear. It's going to be a four-tire stop. Obviously, the car will rock it so far. No special uh, changes for Sterling. I haven't seen a wedge wrench go in yet. They're around the left-hand side. One pump up on the jack. Left, hand, left side tires going in. Second can of gas is in. Important to get every drop in. I think they did get it full. 19 flat for Sterling. Good stop. Joe Nemechek in just behind him. Terry Labonte, Bobby Hillen on pit road. So is Todd Bodine, Jimmy Horton, Rick Mast, and the 40 car. That's Greg Sachs. Here's Glenn. All right, well now we're in the champion Dale Earnhardt's pit, and boy, what a good pit stop. I was looking at one of the crew members on Ken Schrader's team, Ken Church, had fuel splashed in his eyes. They're trying to wash that out right now, but uh, I didn't get a clock on Earnhardt. It looked like an awfully good stop. Again, four tires of fuel. I did not see an adjustment. Oh, wait a minute. They did make a slight adjustment. I'll get with Andy Petrie and find out exactly what that was. Todd Bodine completes his stop as Bobby Hamilton, Rusty Wallace, and Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton come to pit road. Pit road here at Pocono is wider than the straightaways on many of the Winston Cup racetracks. A lot of maneuvering room until you try to get it into that pit stall to get the job done. The other thing is uh, we have to tell that uh, we really didn't get any pit road speed until the, the actual pace car come out of the racetrack today. Usually we do that um, the day before. Timing Bobby Hamilton on the A1 Steak Sauce Pit Stop Time Clock brought to you by A1 and Spicy A1 Bold. Together their house steaks are done. 19.4 for Hamilton. Robbie Loomis in the STP team. Well, I was watching Jeff Gordon's car. They just did a minimal uh, one round down on the right rear on that car, so it wasn't that far off. Uh, apparently, the car was just uh, very close, and if he drove it in the corner hard, it pushed out on it. Hot Strickland has had a great run so far. Quaker State Ford on pit road. Let's go to Randy. No question about it, Mike. He's been hot ever since he got in the car, including the road race out at Sears Point. Had a good run there. Wait for Hutt to hit his mark. He does so in the Quaker State Ford. They go to work on the right side. Have not. Oh, the only chassis adjustment that he wanted was a little air pressure change in the tires. Other than that, no major chassis adjustments, although that could be considered major. Left side tires going on, a couple of pumps with a jack, second can of gas already in. Hunt with a great run going, wants to keep it going. Down and away, 18-6, good stop. Great stop. Hutt Strickland was seventh at Charlotte, fourth at Dover, and in this race, he started 17th and got all the way up to sixth before pit stops began. He has now led one lap. That's probably one of the best stops we saw all day. Hutt finished fourth here in 1991. Well, I tell you what, whoever buys this team is going to get a quality team. Uh, Bernstein is going to sell it in the year in the 26 car. It's such a good race car. It's a shame to see him get out of racing at the end of this year because they, I think they have a driver and everything put together now to have a great race team. Jeff Bodine here battles Rick Sachs. Buddy, why don't you buy that team? I was just going to ask that. You, you could be a car owner. Look at this great race going down into turn one. <laughs> Jeff Bodine picks up the throttle, powers off the corner, down the back straightaway. Mike? <laughs> we'll ask you again later. There's <laughs> Greg Sachs right behind him. But he's been a team owner. Yeah, I know he has. Right. He, he, he had a lot he of money. He knows there's a lot of money but, in racing. He put some of it there. Yeah, but, <laughs> but he was like, he was a team owner and a driver mostly. So maybe now he needs to start with the deal about being an owner. Well, you're a truck owner. How's it going? Um, man, Jeff Bodine's really going <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jeff Bodine leads this race. Remember, he stopped under the first caution flag to make an adjustment in his X-Side batteries Ford. I'm glad you told us that because I didn't know why he had to leave. Now uh, Mike, as we speak, he's coming down pit road again into the pit so right now. And he's pitting on lap 34 right now. He's going to be actually be lap 35. So, uh, you know, basically a lot of the guys think they can go... Um, 33 to 38 laps um, on, a, on a normal caution or a normal uh, fuel stop. Todd Bodine, or rather uh, Kyle Petty, also on pit road as Jeff Bodine makes his stop. Mike Wallace also. Yeah, I think he's one of the guys that stopped the earlier one too. There's last week's winner, Kyle Petty. trouble there on the right side. Go to break. Everything works. So you see everybody rolling tires. The guys there at the exact moment. They're on the way again. Man. Takes you half a day to get two tires put on at a service station. It takes about 18 seconds to have a pit stop here. <laughs> so here are your leaders after pit stops. 
Bobby Hamilton runs in second. Your leader is Bobby Labonte. In the Joe Gibbs Interstate Battery Chevy that finished second last week at Dover and won at Charlotte. Packed house here at Pocono. We'll be right back. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by A1 Steak Sauce. It's how steak is done. Here's Sterling Marlin going off into turn number one in the Morgan McClure Kodak Chevrolet powered by Runt Pittman. If you have questions about the running of this race, give us a call at TNN Motorsports. Your call is free, 1-800-451-7331. And all during the race, they'll take your questions, fax them to us, and we'll try to answer them. Here's second, third, and fourth, Bobby Hamilton, Jeff Gordon, and Rusty Wallace. One question called in is uniquely at this racetrack. Uh, Gary from North Carolina wants to know, there are signs leading up to the corners with three and then two and then one. Why? Oh, you want us to answer that? Well, he, uh, wants, yeah, I, I, he would I, like I, an answer, yes. We don't like to just read the <laughs> questions, you know. <laughs> I, I, I think basically it's telling you how many feet it is into the corner, and I don't think the 100, the one means 100, but it just has you, it gives you some sort of reference point. A lot of the road courses have that, and, a lot of the Trans Am drivers and stuff, they basically go off a lot of that. But this Here you'll is like see it. There's the three, tracks. two, and there's the one marker yeah. going off into the corner. Basically, when you're driving into turn one, you'll, you'll run into about that one. I remember doing that. You, you kind of run into there because it's like a huge straightaway. Yeah, this place is so big and so wide. Mike, that one was always my direct uh, line back to God. If I went past there, I said, if you'll help me through this corner, I'll never do that again. <laughs> Let's find out what happened on that round of pit stops, Glenn. Well, as I said earlier, most of the guys were reporting their cars loose. Uh, Rusty Wallace was just a little loose, made an air pressure adjustment. Uh, Dale Earnhardt was loose. They did the pan hard bar and air pressure. Uh, air pressure adjustments on 43, 24, and 18. Bobby Labonte pitted while we were away on the last break. Remember, he had pitted in the, in the Dale Jarrett crash, so he had about a, a five-lap cushion on the rest of the field there. But every one of them to a man has reported being loose except Michael Waltrip. He said his car was a little tight. So just like Michael always is, had to be a little different. <laughs> okay. Big battle here as they work around the equipment supply company, number 78 of Poncho Carter. Bobby Hamilton with Jeff Gordon right behind and now underneath him and past him. Yes. Gordon, Gordon has definitely got a really good motor. And uh, I tell you, to speak about the motors, this racetrack is probably a motor's guy's, a motor guy's nightmare. I mean, it's unbelievable because your, your car is turning RPMs at a range that is so long. You know, you're basically running the, the straightaway they're running on now. That short shoot, they'll turn 82, 83 hundred in that straightaway. This whole front straightaway, you know, they'll come off this corner about 7,000 RPMs and turn around 8,800 at the end of that straightaway. And this straightaway is so long, and it just it kills the valve springs and timing chains. And um, every time I ever run here, I always broke something. Whether I was running the four car that's leading now, we always broke certain items. And then uh, when I got into the Robert Yates car, we broke a lot of items too here. And uh, you know, normally those things don't break in neither one of those guys' uh, motor shops. The front straightaway here at Pocono is long and wide enough that it would comfortably land a 737 jet airline. Yeah, and so that shows how long that, that straightaway is. I think we can land on this, even the back straightaway. <laughs> Likely. Long pond straightaway is 3,000 feet. 3,000 feet. That's I could land my plane here. Well, not my plane. I couldn't land it myself, but um, I'd like to because it'd be a lot closer to, yeah. to the racetrack. You can see Hutt Strickland there in the 26 car. He just made a move on Hamilton. I think Bobby Hamilton's car may be just a little bit off getting out of the corner right now, and he just moved over and let Hutt go because he knows it's early in the race, and he's letting him go. You're riding with Mark Martin as he and Ted Musgrave try to deal with Kenny Schrader. Did, did you see Mark? If everybody, they have to watch when Mark's car, what Mark did was shift go about the middle of the front straightaway, and then he downshifted getting into the uh, getting into uh, turn three or turn one. They're behind him is Musgrave. You can see Musgrave go wide at the end of that corner and, and uh, Mark went right by him. You see he pulled him about 10 car lengths. That's what going wide there does. He got a little loose getting in that corner and really messed him up. That's all it takes here. 
I'd really like to find out if Mark's doing the, the double shift job and I uh, want to know if he's shifting down the back straightaway. Maybe we can uh, get a shot of that um, when our weather gets a little better. Yeah, right now our helicopter that relays the uh, in-car camera signals can't get high enough in the air to relay that signal from all the way around the track. So uh, once we're able to do that, we're going to check on that for you. Now, here's Mark Martin side by side. Side by side with Schrader. We could, we could hear Ken Schrader saying something about the right front. Down in turn one. Clear. Clear. That's Mark Martin's um, spot. Stop by Cowboy Pit on lap 64. And then what? Uh, Going back to the inside. Just a little bit. Going to the inside. He waved it by. Mark had a hand out the window to Schrader. Ernie, I, I do hear what you're saying. Kenny is complaining about something on the right front of that car, though, because he just made a comment again about the right front. We, we were definitely, we were hearing both spotters. We were hearing yeah. Mark Martin's and Kenny Schrader's, and Mark Martin's spotter, um, Steve, or uh, actually Steve Mill, had come on the radio and told Mark Spotter to tell him that we're going to pit in so-and-so amount of time, and he has to relay that. Now, Mark Martin gets back underneath Ken Schrader, and he's going to drag race him down okay, this front we're going to pit on lap 64. It's 20 laps from now. So these two cars are linked up, nose to tail, and going to try to work together and pit together and draft together. But just a second ago, you saw Musgrave's car drop way back there. Now he's caught back up. That's how strong he is. The car is just a little bit off getting out of the corner. You see him drop back a couple of car lengths there. When they adjust this car, he'll be a factor in this race later. Now, these cars are eight seconds behind the leader. Sterling Marlin is out front, and Jeff Gordon has knocked it down from wow. 3.6 to 1.2 seconds. So Gordon is flying, tracking down Sterling. Boy, when he gets in this rhythm, he's tough to beat, and this kid is really hooked up right now. You see the car come through the corner. It's not slipping or anything. It's just getting forward bite, and he is catching Sterling quite fast. Uh, Jimmy Spencer has taken the Smokin' Joe's number 23 back to the garage area. 43 laps complete of 200. And as you watch Ken Schrader, Mark Martin battle. This is for sixth place. Let's see, that's Mark Martin just shifted again, and now he's in a downshift. There he did it, downshifted it into turn one. Now, I had a lot of trouble when I tried to downshift getting into, into turn one, and uh, here's the 12 car and the 21 car side by side. Somebody's going to have to give getting in the way. This is back at 11th place. Morgan Shepard leading Derek Cope and Ricky Rudd. Uh, Main and Tail Shampoo, the folks uh, that sponsored Derek Cope, had a big open house at their corporate headquarters in Allentown, Pennsylvania, Thursday. 1,200 people showed up to meet Bobby Allison and, uh, and driver Derek Cope. Half his grandstands wearing... Uh straight arrow shirts. I noticed that. They yes. wear pink shirts and the half of the grandstand here is that color. Well, Martin has moved back in front of Schrader. This is back at sixth place. Ernie, it looks like maybe Schrader, when he's in front of Mark, has a problem staying down on the bottom part of the racetrack. Now he's dropped back in there just to draft along with him. Yeah, I think that's what the problem is, is maybe Kenny's, when he's in the lead, he's pushing a little bit. Now when he gets down behind Mark, that, that helps his car. Now the 24 car has caught the four car, and um, I don't think it's going to be much longer. He's going to be in the lead. Boy, Jeff Gordon flying around this racetrack. He's running down a half a straightaway, Mike. Well, we may have a lead change when we come back here to Pocono International. Jeff Gordon makes the move down to the inside of Sterling Marlin, going off into the corner, and he's going to take the lead. So Gordon puts the DuPont Chevrolet out front at the 11th lead change so far today. Marlin is second, Strickland third, Wallace, Hamilton, Martin, and Schrader. Forty-nine laps complete. Jeff Gordon is out front. Mike, a little tomahawk on the grandstand here beginning to sway. You know, they call this group the uh, Rainbow, Rainbow Warriors, and uh, Jeff Gordon gets in the lead. They start doing that tomahawk up here. I noticed down on the front straightaway here, there's about 20 of them going up and down right now. That's easy for you to say, huh, buddy? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boy wonder. He was tabbed earlier this season, and Gordon has led 12 of the 13 races so far this year. Only race he did not lead was at the road course at Sears Point. And he runs second or third at that race. So um, I tell you, they've been a really dominant force uh, in Winston Cup racing this year. But on the big tracks, 
So has this car. Oh, yeah. Martin. It's a great race car, but he's fighting a loose condition right now. They're going to make some adjustments probably on the next stop to make this car tighter. Uh, we're getting reports that a lot of the race cars are running sideways up out of the corner, so they'll adjust these cars and make them good. Ken Schrader now battles Ted Musgrave. This is for seventh. Mark Martin has gone on by. And here's Randy LaJoy, John Andretti just ahead of Mark Martin, who's now pretty much alone on the racetrack Whoa, in John. sixth place. Mm, that's a lot of racetrack up there, but that's not usable stuff he was in just then. It's not usable. Plus, so here goes Teddy Musgrave, um, probably going to give a side Kenny Schrader. We have to give a, a call to Teddy Musgrave. You know, he ran really good last week. He uh, ended up third. And I tell you, that team has really come alive. I kid, I kid with he and Howard Comstock in the garage area yesterday. I said, you can't sneak up on him anymore. I said, you're a factor. Mike, you see Terry Labonte moving into the frame there as we were showing that. They said when he qualified, he didn't pick up any. You know, a lot of times you block off these cars for qualifying to make them more aerodynamic. You really hurt them. But you see he's back in the fray here. He's right up front. Started way back, so don't count him out. They're going to lap past the uh, Kmart Little Caesars number 37, the Kranifus Haas car for, for John Andretti. And we talked with Andretti this week. I think all of us had a chance to get a word with him. He said on our telecast at Dover, talked about somebody running into him, uh, got a chance to look at the video, and, and his dad told him pretty well right off that nobody touched him in that wreck at Dover. And what he was saying was, well, that's sure what it felt like. It felt just like somebody turned him around as we saw and you saw at home there wasn't any contact but he was expressing that was what it felt like he, he's a good young race driver and he's got a good future in this sport Mike the more he does the Western Cup racing the less he'll apologize because I'm going to tell you something everybody out there has made a mistake before well, 51 laps are complete here Jeff Gordon is opening up his lead over Sterling Marlin our live coverage on TNN continues after this Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Saw the work going on on Dale Jarrett's car. They still hope to get him back in the race as he came in here 13th in the Winston Cup points. Jeff Gordon out in front, no surprise. He has a four-second lead right now on Sterling Marlin. Ernie, you've learned to sit up here and out observe what's going on. Look what's happening here with Hut Strickland. I tell you, Hut Strickland is uh, really running good. And, um, you know, now he's uh, past the four car. I think he's in the second place. And, um, you know, Hut's on a mission. And uh, he's really doing real good. There's Rusty Wallace and Bobby Hamilton. Now that's fourth and fifth place. So right now we have a Chevrolet leading, a Ford in second. Third is a Pontiac, fourth is a, a Ford. Um, I mean, I tell you that, well, we actually have Sterling Marlin. He's in the Chevrolet, and he was, he's in third. But you have three makes in the top four positions. Three That's makes. pretty good. Last yeah. week, we had three makes finish in the top three positions. I, I think that the NASCAR, our hat's off to NASCAR because they they governed the, the field a little bit. Not much, but they, they made the playing field real equal, and I don't think anybody can complain about it right now. I don't think they can argue about it much, I'll tell you that, because it looks like, uh, you know, the cars are so equal now. Look at Rusty, come through that corner. Oh, he Whoa. almost lost that baby. You can, see, you can see his hands jerking through the steering wheel. Now, that doesn't feel in the race car oh, yes, as it bad does. as it looks right oh, there, yes, does it? it does. Let me tell you, if you can see it with the camera, it's twice that bad in the race car. <laughs> okay. Yeah, de definitely. Okay. Especially that corner. You're going so fast into that corner. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're going uh, 185 miles an hour getting into that corner. You know, it, it, we've got another look at Rusty's bobble and watch his hands. See how loose oh, he is? What a wow. catch. That's two handfuls. Yeah, I mean, that was a lot looser now once we got to see it in slow motion. I, mean, I tell you, you know, that was a heck of a save. But that corner right there is one of the, the toughest in Winston Cup racing. The tunnel turn. It is a tough one. 55 laps complete. Jeff Gordon leads Hutt Strickland, Sterling Marlin, Bobby Hamilton, and Rusty Wallace, the top five. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Pocono. 58 laps are complete here in the Winston Cup event. Opryland, official destination of NASCAR. For more information, call Monday through Friday, 615-889-6611. Lots to see him do there. 
Rusty Wallace made a pit stop while we were away. It had only been 25 laps since he'd been on pit road. Randy Pemberton, what'd they do? Well, you saw him get crossed up out there on the racetrack. Evidently, he just didn't like the feel of it. Might have scared himself a little bit. Couldn't get back in the groove. Came in. He said he thought he had one going down. We've looked at the tires in here. All the guys are shaking their heads. They're taking tire temperatures. No problem with the tires. So uh, Rusty has just pitted a little early. It'll be okay if they don't catch a caution right now. But uh, no tire down on the two car. Just had to change four. Actually, Randy, he might want to catch a caution right now because he's toward the tail end of the lead lap. He did not lose a lap. So he's still on the lead lap. But, well, as you said, well out of the pit stop sequence now. He's in 24th position. I, I, Ted I'd Musgrave say, and Terry Labonte here. Yeah, I'd say Rusty's going to be a factor before the end of this race. You see... Uh, Right there in the Kellogg's car, Terry Labonte moving on the inside of Musgrave, moving in behind Mark Martin. A while ago, Mark Martin was right up front. He dropped off the pace just a little bit. I think that uh, Terry Labonte may have picked it up just a little bit. Labonte takes over sixth place behind Mark Martin and ahead of Ted Musgrave. Boy, Musgrave, what a string of top five finishes he has had. He is fifth in points, just one point behind Mark Martin and 77 points out of third. Watch, watch that motor in the five car. You know, that's a Hendrix motor, and I'm telling you, those people have got a lot of power right now. Randy Dorton, who heads Hendrick engines, up on the roof spotting today. And look at how he closed right down on Mark Martin. And that was in the corner, too, so he's got some good people behind the wall over there also. There's no doubt. Watch him. He's going to come right out. And, uh, Coming to the inside. Smoke. Inside. Be clear behind the five. That was Mark Spotter right there. Oh, boy, did he... You're right. They got an engine in that car, I'm going to tell you right now. He moved right by. Front straightaway. Tell him to wave out the window if he wants us to pull the rubber out of the right front. Ken Schrader coming yeah, he, in. He's pitting early, too. We yeah, they weren't have... supposed to pit till lap 64 yeah. was their strategy. I'm sure Randy will have us something on there. Glenn's going to be there right now. Ken Schrader brings the Budweiser Chevrolet in. Again, I said they were fighting in awfully loose conditions. Uh, I'm right beside his pit in uh, Mark Mark's pit. He will come in, the, I think, in the next lap or so. And you see him make an adjustment on the right rear of the car there. Two, three rounds. So, that, okay, that was the uh, jack screw adjustment there. So they're really trying to tighten Schrader's car up. A little bit of a slow pit stop. Not the best they've done. 22.4 seconds. That's, uh, that's about two, three seconds longer than they'd like to see. He's down and away. We're going to stay right here. We'll get back when Mark Martin comes in. Dave Marcus was very slow coming down the pit lane, well below the 65 mile hour speed limit, but he goes back out. Todd Bodine is on pit road. Here's Sterling Marlin in the pits. Randy. Well, last time uh, Sterling radioed to Tony Glover, he said, boy, we could really use a caution. See if this sounds right, Ernie. He wanted to stick a rubber in the right front. Everybody else complaining about being loose. Sterling was complaining about being tight. The last pit stop, they made an adjustment with air pressure. They're already over on the left side for a four-tire stop. Second can of fuel goes in. Glover on the radio tells him to go. 20 flat, pretty good stop again for the four crew. I tell you, if they were wanting a rubber in the right front, I, it would have to be, um, I would think the car would be loose. And um, now, there again, I'm not a crew chief. All right, Professor Baker, a spring rubber is a spacer that goes between the spring and the A-frame. What's it do? Well, it's stiff in the spring, and if you're pushing, you don't want to stiff in the spring. You want to get better bite, so you're going to make it uh, a lot easier to push down. So I think they probably want to take one out, but under the green, they don't have time to reach in there and do all that work. So they're, they're looking for a caution to make a major adjustment. Here's Bobby Hamilton underneath Hutch Strickland. That'll change second place. Get the Pontiac back into second and drop the Ford to third. I am impressed with Hamilton's crew. I'll tell you what. I take back what I said a while ago. The crew's not letting him down. That's great stops. He comes back out in second place. That's great. Ted Musgrave. Family Channel Ford. Howard Comstock's crew completing pit work. Sending Ted back out. And, you know, we thought that... The Rusty pitting that much earlier. That really wasn't that bad a deal, you know. Uh, no. Rusty's probably going to end up close to the lead uh, when all the pit stops get done. Ernie, off our 800 number, Della Fay calls in from Slatington here in Pennsylvania. Why do the Chevys run forward rear ends? Um... Because that's what Hutchin himself. <laughs> I guess, it, I guess you know, Winston Cup racing's always been that way. Uh, we'll tell you in a second. Here's Hutt Strickland coming down onto pit road. Randy's in his pit. I'll tell you, they're waiting for the 26 car to come on pit road. 
Hutt comes down pit road, hits his mark once again. You know, it's amazing what momentum can do in this sport. You know it does it in football, basketball, baseball, but this team has definitely got some momentum. They're on the right-hand side, already around to the left. Jack goes up, one pump again, a couple more just to make sure the car is cleared. Left side tire, second can of gas, Hutt's down and away, and 17-2. Glenn Jarrett? Well, this is Mark Martin. They've already changed the right side tires. They go to the left side. We heard Steve Mills tell the spotter to ask Mark if he wanted to rub her out of the right front. He never held his hand out the window, never made that move, so they left okay. him in. He's down and away Good at 22.6. McGum blew up, guys. Sorry. Air gun blew up. Was Air gun. Said. Yes, that's what he was waving for, to get another gun in there. And here's Jeff Gordon coming into the pits. Leader. And there's Glenn going to be uh, in his pit. Glenn? We're trying to get there, guys. It's about five spaces between me and uh, Jeff Gordon. I'm here. My cameraman is on the way, and Jeff Gordon has pulled up. I want to see if they make an adjustment. Again, most of them have been making the adjustment via air pressure. I want to see what the Gordon does. Of course, I don't think they want to adjust too much as well as that car was running. Looks like a good stop so far. No, I did not see any adjustment made, so if they did one, it was done with air pressure. We got about 18 seconds flat. Great pit stop, Randy. Three car comes down pit road. Terry Labonte already in. Left side tires down the right. Whoa, just about clips the 42 tire carrier. Kyle Petty is in down here. That held up Terry Labonte just a little bit after a great stop by the five crew. Around the left-hand side for Kyle's crew on the 42 car. Left side tires were in. Second can of fuel in once again. Kyle looks very calm in the car. Down and away. Earnhardt is in up pit road. Kyle Petty completes his service and comes back out. There's Bobby Hillen's car in the frame, and Dale Earnhardt completes his service. Goes back out under green at lap 64, second round of green flag pit stops. Rick Mast finishing up, going back out. So does Dick Trickle. And Jeff Bodine comes on to pit road. I think after all the pit stops, I think that uh, Jeff Gordon's probably going to end up in the lead. I think you're right. Paul Andrews team servicing Jeff Bodine. The reason they run those Ford rear ends is the Chevrolet rear end is what the engineers call a Salisbury type rear end and to change the gear ratio you have to change the whole rear end housing and all. With the Ford type rear end you can simply unbolt the center section the ring and pinion and the drive shaft yoke unbolt that take it out put another one in and much more simply change the gear ratio. That's why all the teams run the Ford rear ends and it is an NASCAR rule that they do so. 65 laps complete in the Sitco Ford of Morgan Shepard, whose owners, the Wood Brothers, were honored with the Pocono Bill France Award of Excellence last night. Morgan has the lead. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by RCA, changing entertainment again. 67 laps complete in Morgan Shepard. Brings his car to the attention of the Wood Brothers on pit road. Mikey told me before the race, he said, I put a bigger sway bar than I've ever run here before. He said, I'll either really be good or really be bad. Looks like it's a pretty good guess. He's led this race and now completes the pit stop. Here's Randy. Hey, one other thing. This is one of the cars that started with spring rubbers all the way around on all four corners. If they continue to go to the front, I'll go down and check with them, see if they pulled any of those out. But that's amazing. All the way around the car, rubbers in the spring. So Shepard is back out. 24 of the 42 starters are on the lead lap. Let's mention Jimmy Spencer came back into the race. 20 laps back. Jeff Gordon's lead right now is six seconds. Let's show it to you here. There's Todd Bodine just a lap down. Where is the second place car? Hut Strickland just ahead of Sterling Marlin as they come out of turn three and Rusty Wallace. We talk about driver changes, crew chief changes. Here's a shakeup. John Barr was the president of Valvoline until Tuesday. Left. Now he's president of Quaker State. Wow. That is a change. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, in that's the garage area in the boardroom. I mean, the best of luck. John's a big fan of racing. Best of luck to you. Well, he left a great oil company and went to a great oil right. company. That's all I can tell you. I think he was the player to be named later in the Steve Kinzer deal. Uh, Not a chance. I don't know. Sterling has pulled down on Hut Strickland. We'll watch Sterling. He was he was dropping back just a bit before this stop here, and uh, now he seems to be running quite well. See Hut Strickland right in front of him. 
Boy, what a, what a job he's doing in this car. You know, Hutt started the season out without a ride, and they give him a call when uh, Steve Kenzer went back to uh, sprint car racing. And let me tell you, Steve Kenzer had so much talent that he just didn't have time to adjust to this race team. So don't feel bad about uh, Steve Kenzer. He's back winning again. I read where he won a couple races last week, as a matter of fact. He's done well. I tell you, you know, and to, to comment more on that, Hutt Strickland is one of the guys that knows a lot about a chassis. He's one of the guys, somewhat like I am, or, or uh, Rusty Wallace, and they, he can come in and say, I want this, this, and this. Steve Kinzer didn't have anything to fall back on. He never really drove these cars. So. For, for a big car on right. super speedway. Right. 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 But tremendous talent. Oh, yeah. he just, he's working that wheel pretty good. Uh, Ernie said a little while ago while we were way at break, I don't care how good the car works, you have to drive it through that tunnel turn over there because the car is very light in that area. You see Rusty's got by Sterling as we mm -hmm. speak there, and here comes Musgraves right behind him moving up into the fray. Off our 800 line, Ronnie from Alabama wanted to know what happened to Darrell Waltrip's car. Internal engine trouble put Waltrip behind the wall after just two laps. 71 laps complete. Here's the next pack. Ted Musgrave with Terry Labonte and Bobby Hamilton. Single file right now, and here goes Labonte. Nope. I tell you, you know, just to comment a little bit like on Daryl's problem, it's amazing that we didn't have any more problems because nobody got any practice after qualifying. I would say 100% of the cars changed motors after qualifying. Everybody usually has a qualifying motor. They changed motors. They didn't have any ways to to um, see what was going on. And, um, you know, evidently had something wrong in the motor and, and didn't know about it. Jeff Gordon to put John Andretti two laps back. There are now 27 cars posted on the lead lap. Excuse me, that'll put John, I'm sorry, put John one lap down. He unlapped himself during the round of pit stops. You know, you watch Jeff Gordon go around the racetrack. He's going down the front straightaway here. You'll see the signs here. That's just in front of him is Bodine. It's a good race car. That was Michael Walker just in front of him. These guys are fighting for their life or they're going to lap down pretty quick. And here we'll track the field for you to pick out that your favorite driver is still running and in what group of cars as we watch Jeff Gordon. John Andretti makes his pit stop. A lot of questions on the 800 line about tires. And first of all, does Goodyear provide the tires for free? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's an emphatic uh, no, folks. No. Yes. What's a, no. Tire, what's a tire cost these days? Um, I think they're around um, $1,300 to $1,400. A set. That's a set. set of four. Yeah, set of four. We don't talk tires, Mike. You never buy one tire. You buy sets. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's $1,200 right around in there per set. And uh, for a race like this, and you find out how many you're going to need, and you mount them up, and a lot of times you'll go back and buy several more sets if you have any problems whatsoever during the race. Now, John from Ontario wanted to know, what happens to Dale Jarrett's or Darrell Waltrip's tires now that he's out of the race? Can he turn them in for credit, save them for the next race? What does he do? I think Goodyear has actually made it where now you can actually turn those tires back in. You can re return five or ten sets. But, you know, it used to be in times to come, you used to only be able to turn one set back in. But now they, they made it where they loosened that up. Buddy wants to talk real bad. Yeah, boy, I'm jumping in my seat over here. Let me tell you what happened. In Darlington, for the first time, they made a decision to turn in the tires after the race. They were very lucky. They used that tire last week in Dover yes. as a backup tire, and they had all these tires to bring in there and make them work at Dover. So they turn them in now. You don't have to eat them like when I had my race team. There were two companies in there, and if I mounted 20 sets of good years, I'd have to mount 20 sets of Hoosier just in case it was that Hoosier that was working that particular day. For more, here's Randy. Well, just to add to that, uh, these guys down here get three sets of tires until qualifying is complete. They can't go out there and run, run in eight or nine or ten sets like they could a couple of years ago. That was to help to keep the cost down. Whether or not that has been accomplished is yet to be determined by some uh, car owners. But in these pits, about six or seven sets is what I counted prior to race time here for most of these teams. Thanks, Randy. And what happens to used tires? Well, they make nice souvenirs. 73 laps are complete. Jeff Gordon leads Hutt Strickland, Rusty Wallace, and Sterling Marlin. For information on Featherlight trailers, call 1-800-800-1230. Featherlight's the official trailer of NASCAR. And a big display here by Cedar Ridge Motorhomes in Branchville, New Jersey, providing highway transportation to TNN. 
1-800-988-4884. You'll find out why Cedar Ridge and Winnebago is the choice of champions. Here's the battle we left as we went to break. Ted Musgrave leading Terry Labonte and Bobby Hamilton. This is at fifth place. Boy, Terry's getting in that flat corner there. Super good. Now, when he gets on the throttle here, he's not losing anything, as you notice, too. That car has really got a nice motor in it. Jimmy Horton on pit road with the Hooters Ford. Elton Sawyer raced last night he at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And so, and will also miss the Daytona Winston Cup race, but then he'll drive that car the rest of the year. And look who's back in the race after an hour and 14 minutes. Man. Dale Jarrett. I was going to correct you on Hutt's trip, Hutt, uh, or actually uh, Elton, uh, Sawyer. Elton Sawyer, and I said, well, wait a minute, he said it right. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Labonte and Bobby Hamilton battle. Sue from Florida called her 800 line and wanted to know who started seventh. Well, Darrell Walter started seventh. Darrell Walter finished 42nd. Here's your Napa. Field standing update. We keep America running, so we'll show you how they're running at 78 laps. Preston from North Carolina wants to know how big Jeff Bodine's margin of victory was here last year. He beat Ward Burton by 1.26 seconds to win this race last year. Coming up on 80 laps, 200 miles. And the weather continues to look pretty good. We were washed out completely here yesterday. Arca 150 postponed to July and no Winston Cup practice so a lot of question marks as we started this race today Steve Grissom makes a pit stop in the Meineke number 29 big news on that team that Buddy Parrott has resigned as vice president of operations of the Gary Bechtel owned team as of this week boy that's a lot of talent there but uh, you know sometimes you have to make a change and uh, I'm sure Buddy will get with the race team and uh, He's a real good organizer, so I'm sure somebody's looking for that out there. Now here's Ted Musgrave. He's caught Sterling Marlin. Marlin's car, even though this is a two and a half mile racetrack, doesn't sound like it did at Daytona when it won the 500 and created all that hoopla. Clear. Ted Musgrave moves on past. It's not sounding like or running like right now, but I think it's all in the chassis. I think no. the car is running quite well. He's just having problems. Uh, I don't really see anything in the corner of this warranting this, except coming off. You notice he washed out right there. See Bobby Hamilton coming to the outside, now to the inside. And Marlin's car was a rocket the first 20 laps. And now that looks like he might have a little problem down the straightaway because Bobby Hamilton pulled him some two car lengths right out. He wasn't even drafting by. He pulled over quite a distance away and, and motored by. Jimmy Horton made another pit stop. That one unscheduled. Let's look at Jeff Bodine and Morgan Shepard. Shepard was the last of the leaders that were in sequence to pit. Remember Jeff Bodine got out of the pit stop sequence by stopping on the first caution. And these three cars, Ken Schrader, in 25, Jeff Bodine in 7, Morgan Shepard 21 are running in 9th, 10th, and 11th positions. Mike, it looks like a race for the lead. There's nothing easy in racing. You've seen Kenny Schrader at the first part of the race. He was able to move away from everybody. Now he's holding on in ninth place, and uh, they'll keep adjusting. One caution brings everybody together again. A whole new race. These cars are 24 seconds behind the leader, Jeff Gordon. 81 laps complete here at Pocono. Gordon, the leader. Hutt Strickland in second. Rusty Wallace is third. Sterling Marlin and Ted Musgrave battle for fourth. Bobby Hamilton, sixth, ahead of Terry Labonte. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. TNN Weather Radar that is our helicopter pilot reports rain in the area and we are 17 laps short of halfway if we complete half distance the race becomes official Rusty Wallace there with Hutt Strickland a ride on his bumper as they come around turn one well that's been a that, they've waged this battle for the past four or five laps you see Hutt Strickland trying to get under Rusty Wallace down the long pond straightaway going into turn three Rusty waved him past yeah, wonder how long you want him to stay there, though. <laughs> we'll see. 
Ooh, same song, ah, second verse. I think I seen why he motioned him on by. I think Rusty may have just a little bit of problem coming through that corner there with the back end. The Jimmy, car is dancing around a little bit, Mike. Jimmy Spencer returns to the garage area, completing 61 laps today. Whoa! No, oh, Rusty, Rusty, Rusty. Mm. Is that, the, is that the toughest job out here to drive a car that, that's handling like that? Uh, well, it's not. Let me tell you, it's not off that much. It's just one of those deals where you're coming off under full power Fire like that, the back end jumps, and, and you have to back off or just mm -hmm. stand right on around. So it's not like on dirt where you power it through the slide. You can't do that on major speedway. You have to check up and get it back under control. So there's Rusty losing a bit of ground there to Bobby Hamilton. Ted Musgrave. Let's check in his pit. Here's Glenn. Well, ask Robin Pemberton if he was having a problem if the car was still a little loose, which he told me earlier. He said, not really. He <laughs> said, like, buddy, like you just said, it's sliding around. He said, it's just skating on him a little bit. Uh, again, not having any chance to work on the chassis. They couldn't hit it exactly like they wanted it, but Rusty is one of the best, and I think Robin Pemberton, his crew chief, also two of the best at adjusting on the car during the race. If they ever get a caution flag to adjust it on, I think they'll find it. Randy? Well, Sterling Marlin has fallen outside the top ten. He's come over the radio to uh, his crew chief, Tony Glover, said, man, the front end is just sliding all over the place. And to kind of correct what I said before, talking to you, Ernie, about taking the rubber out, they're going to take one out of the right front if they get a chance. But Tony's not quite sure. They think they're going to come down pit road around lap 91. But Sterling just cannot keep the front end where he wants it on the racetrack. Well, just then, he was pretty proud of that little rubber he had in the right front because that car got completely sideways getting off into turn one. He was very lucky to catch it. He's real lucky he had a rubber in the right front. Yeah. And then to kind of comment on what a spring rubber is, and I'm sure we've showed it on TV before, but it actually is, is a piece of rubber that goes between the coils in the spring, not 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 between the frame. You're right. I'm sorry. Like yep. that. And uh, it's, a, it's a piece in the... Uh, the coil of the spring looks like a donut right most of the time we'll split it in half and here's um uh, rusty wallace again you know uh, he's actually lost another position uh, to the five car well terry labani moved by just a second ago and just behind him is mark martin when you get a little bit off like that boy they, it just seems like you line up and really want to get after you then you see right there he's just a little bit loose he's, he's right not there. able to come off the corner like he wants to and that hurts you straight away speed and Mark, Mark stuck that bumper up under there so he could <laughs> probably try to get him a little more loose. <laughs> Here's Bobby Hamilton in 43 going to work on Ted Musgrave. Wow, on the outside. I don't, that uh, will not high. work. They're high. Yeah, he's going to probably get under him now. Yep, there uh, they're behind the 43. We have the spotter for the 43 car, or, or actually 16. the 16 car. Look at Terry Labonte move in there. But right now his chassis is set up for a long run. He really comes on near the end of the pit stop. You see him moving under Musgraves there, trying to take that spot away. And it makes it look easy when that car gets a good run up off that corner and you have a little bit of handling problem. You're having to pacify the car through the corner. They're in the throttle and gone. Lovati squeezes in in front of Ted Musgrave and that will change fourth place. Jeff Gordon leads here. We are 13 laps from halfway. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Pocono. 89 laps complete, 11 laps from halfway as Randy LaJoy's MBNA Pontiac is pushed toward the garage area, and Rusty Wallace completes a 19.8 second pit stop. What they do, Glenn? Well, Mike, in addition to uh, changing tires and fueling the car, they did make an adjustment on the track bar to try to get the car from skating around. The car's acting up awfully poorly in the corners. It looks real loose, so they. They adjusted the track bar, four tires, and sent him away. Randy? Well, uh, Tony Glover and the guys waiting for Sterling Marlin to come down pit road. Some of these cars have changed a lot chassis-wise over the last few minutes. This place is totally covered with clouds. It has changed about 10 degrees in the last 20 minutes. They're going to work on the right front. We're going to check and see if they do take a spring rubber out one way or the other out of this car. Around the left-hand side of the Kodak Chevrolet, left side tires on already. Sterling sits calmly in the car. Left side a little slow, left rear getting down of the way. They did take a rubber out of the right front. There it is on pit road. 21-1 for Sterling. That's really good doing that and uh, you know making a chassis adjustment. Uh, that, that's a really good stop actually pulling that spring rubber out. You can see Bobby Hamilton just a second ago take over the second spot 
over the 26 car. Hut Strickland is showing a loose condition now, I think. I noticed across the turn tunnel there, you see him going in on the outside. He's just moving over and letting the faster cars go by right now. There's a Terry Labonte moving underneath, going past Strickland, who will certainly be in. At the front of that pack is the Hooters, number 27. Jimmy Horton was overcome by fumes. Jimmy Spencer, tough customer if there ever was one, has climbed into that car to try to go the distance. Well, he won uh, Daytona and Talladega last year in that same uh, car. I mean, it's same not the same car, but same team, yes. Yeah. Rick Mast, number one, the school car of Richard Jackson, just ahead of Ward Burton's Hardy's number 31, and Ricky Craven, the Kodiak 41, and the leader working underneath them, that's number 24, Jeff Gordon. Squeeze, play, look at this! <laughs> That's Jeremy Mayfield down on the inside. The RCA satellite car is Rusty Wallace and Sterling Marlin on fresh tires. Blast past he and Derek Cope. Ted Musgrave and Hutt Strickland go at it behind Todd Bodine. In fact, restores T-Bird. You see Hutt now going in the corner. He's way up high on the racetrack. That's how you tighten the car up here. That makes it a little bit tighter if you move up on your line getting in the corner there. And uh, right now, I would say he'll be in the pits pretty quick. Now that front straightaway here is so wide that you could park about 10 cars wide with room to get in and out. So I guess racing six wide shouldn't be such a big deal, but it still looks exciting. The only time it's a big deal is when you get it to the other end down yes. here. There's only room for two cars to get in that corner down there. So you have to make a decision who's going to lift. And if you got six drivers that are brave, you're in trouble. Race leader Jeff Gordon in traffic trailing Ward Burton and Rick Mast, who are on the tail end of the lead lap in 19th and 20th positions. Jeff Gordon is flying right at this moment. You can tell he's passing some great cars. Randy Pemberton is in Hut Strickland's pit. Hut Strickland running six. The guy's waiting for him to come down pit road. Got to tell you this story as Hut Cruz is by in the front stretch. They radio to him. They said, Hut, you keep running like you're running now. We're going to give you one of those good cars we got back at the shop. Of course, they've given him the best they could today. Running well, has a shot to win. This car has not gone to victory lane since about 1990, I believe it was. Brent Nine in North Wilkesboro. Left side tires are on the Quaker State Board. Down and away for Hut Strickland. 17-2. Wow, great wow. stop. That's the fastest stop we've seen all day. Motivation. Mike, they're doing their adjustments, uh, apparently in uh, tire pressure, because I did not see a jet screw uh, moved on that race car. It was all done through the uh, tires, I guess. Here is Jeff Gordon moving underneath the car, and driver who finished second here last year, Ward Burton, in the Hardy's number 31. You know, that's good to see. Uh, Ward's off just a little bit. He moved over to the outside to let Gordon go. These guys have a lot of racing uh, savvy, and they know that someday they'll be on the inside wanting to lead this race, and, they'll move, and he'll move for them, too. And he moved for his younger brother, Jeff, who is a lap behind him but has fresher tires in the Ray Vestas number eight. Ricky Craven makes a pit stop, comes back out. The slowest stop for Hutt Strickland today was 18.6. They reeled off two straight stops at 17.2. Wow, pretty fast work. For second place now, behind Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin's Valvoline Ford, and the STP Pontiac of Bobby Hamilton. That car looks good. Just behind them there, you see Terry Labonte moving up in the fray here. I tell you what, if I had to say right now the strongest car, he's not, uh, track position-wise, he's not really good, but the five car right now, Terry Labonte, I think is as fast as any car out there. And if you believe the analogy that this is a road course with all left turns, Labonte is one of the best two or three road racers in NASCAR. Ooh, oh, he, wow. Somebody checked up. Somebody almost wrecked. Martin. And Mark Martin, he's off the pace a little bit down the back straightaway. I think that was because he got a little bit too loose. Uh, now he's outside, waving. Hitch coming on the outside. I think he's got well, a tire going down. Oh, we might have run out of gas, Steve. Uh, oh. oh, no. This is not a racetrack you want to run now, out of gas in. Come here, Steve. For the car burble right down there in turn number one, that is the steepest banking here at Pocono. Uh, he's Mike, you see him waving now. everybody. He's coming in the pits. He's moving back and forth Pit with his hand. Let him know he's coming in. Pit this time. I say it's the steepest banking down in, in turn number one, and he may not have been picking up fuel. 4100. 4100 is the RPM that he must run down pit road to meet the mandatory speed limit. 
Musgrave is in. Hamilton is in. Here's Glenn. Well, you hear the instructions they're giving Mark Martin. That's just to remind him every time they hand him the water glass, they also tell him how many uh, laps he can go on fuel. They were worried that time, obviously, that they had gone too far. He is in. They're still having problems with the uh, with the chassis on the car. And, and like I said a while ago, as long as they keep having to make the green flag stops, they can't make the number and the kind of adjustments they'd like to make. They can adjust a few things, but boy, under caution, they can really make those moves. Got the left side of the ground and away in about 19.8 seconds. Pretty good stop for Martin considering the circumstances. There, Ricky Rudd is in as they make a chassis adjustment on the right rear of his car. Hamilton and Musgrave complete their service. They're back out. So another round of green flag stops. Greg Sachs is in. Three laps will be halfway. Terry Labonte's on pit road. Rick Hendrick owned Kellogg's Cornflakes car. Here's Randy. Gary Dehart and the guys waiting for Terry to hit his mark. Mike, Mark, Mike Slatterly will loosen the left side lug nuts as Walter Smith jacks the Kellogg's machine on the right hand side. Left side lug nuts already done on the left front and the left rear. Waiting for the jack to come around. Car goes up. Water bottle fires out of the car from Terry Labonte. Wiping the windshield. Gas already in. Wow, that was a great stop as well. Terry down and away. 18-5. These guys are something down here today. Great stops. You see Earnhardt coming in the pits as we speak there. Andy Petrie's crew gets the right side of Earnhardt's good wrench Chevrolet in the air. Seven-time national champion and the current point leader. Mike, you see him really working on that windshield. Although the sun's not out all the way around the racetrack, it's parts of this racetrack where the sun really bothers you. So cleaning that windshield, they do as much of that as they do tires. You see, he worked on that windshield the whole stop. 19 seconds for the Richard Childress owned Chevrolet. Mark Martin is your race leader. Terry Labonte second at the time he pitted. Jeff Bodine, Morgan Shepard, and Brett Bodine, the top five. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by Pep Boys Automotive Supercenter. So that's where all our banners end up. <laughs> Jeff Gordon has just picked up the $10,000 bonus for leading the halfway lap, and so then we'll make his pit stop $10,000 richer. After the three hundred dollars he won at the Winston Select like he needs $10,000. But Glenn Jarrett's waiting on his pit. Well, Mike, like you said, they did wait to collect that money, and you could always use an extra 10. Don't, don't be fooled by that. He asked, he told Ray Everham that just before he came in, if he would tighten it up a little bit, Ray told me he was not going to adjust the car. He felt like the new tires would tighten it up enough uh, to, uh, to satisfy Jeff there, but he said no way were they going to touch it right now. It's the best they've had it all day. Good work so far in the pits. The right side already done, left side up. Down and away in 17 and a half seconds. Great pit stop. Jeff Bodine and Morgan Shepard running second and third are also on pit road. Here's your Goodyear mid-race report brought to you by Goodyear. Number one in tires. Eight different leaders, 14 lead changes. Average speed, record pace, 147.6. Only one caution flag for three laps that came out at lap four. Kenny Schrader, Jeff Gordon. Look at how the Hendrick engines have led today. They've led, what, 80% of the laps so far. Bobby Hamilton and Sterling Marlin make that 70% of the laps so far today. Hot Strickland, Jeff Bodine, Bobby Labonte, and Morgan Shepard each also has a shot at the lead. Out of the race, Darrell Walter and Joe Nemechek and the Jimmy Spencer car also behind the wall. Dale Jarrett's car back out after lengthy repairs. We'll be right back to Pocono after this. Welcome back to Pocono. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ernie Irvin. Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pember to bring you TNN's live coverage. If you're in Nashville, you need to visit Opryland USA, the official destination of NASCAR. For more information, call Monday through Friday, 615-889-6611. You know, sometimes we kind of forget what's happening on the racetrack, but we have a pretty good race up front. I just noticed that uh, Hutt Strickland is like four or five car lengths back from the leader. And look at this bunch right here. Now, this is a fight for, what, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth? Third on back, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, Sterling Marlin. Rick Mast is in there, but he's a lap down. And Mark Martin just takes a spot away from Bobby Hamilton. That's sixth place. 
Well, Bobby rolled out of the gas there just for a second. It looked like he might have a problem, but what he wanted to do was get back to the bottom of the racetrack and get back in the throttle as fast as he could and run along there with Mark down the back straightaway. And I think that's an interesting point about this racetrack. Unlike many super speedways, where you can race all the way around side by side, it seems here, again, more like a road racetrack, if somebody has the preferred line on you going into the corner, it seems to work better if that driver will just drop back and tuck in and oh. then chase him off the corner. Mike, coming off the corner here is the race, not getting mm -hmm. in. You need to get in good, but, I mean, the faster you can get back in the throttle and make that straightaway longer, getting back in the throttle quick, boy, that means everything on the straightaway. Terry Labonte trying to gain a little distance there on the rest of that draft. You can see the hoods there down that straightaway. These cars are running close to 200 miles an hour down this long front straightaway. You can see the, the aerodynamics of it, the uh, hoods and all. They're just flapping in the breeze there. And uh, it only does that when you get to these high speeds like this. Mm -hmm. Let's check in on a situation developing with the Bobby Labonte car. Last week's second place finisher has now gone two laps down. Glenn? Yeah, Mike, he's got a real problem. He only has high gear, and you know how tough that is to take off here because of the little bit taller gear ratio you have to run to run down this long straightaway. So, oddly enough, that car, the number 18 car, had the same problem here uh, last year. He ran it. He, he lost high gear. So, it is a Jericho transmission. Normally, those things are really reliable, but only high gear for Bobby Labonte. That's why he had so much trouble taking off. It just gives you all kinds of problems on green flag stops and even on restarts under caution you know you have to get a run and start on him so he's got a long day ahead of him for the rest of the afternoon Whew, i tell you one thing bobby hamilton he had to move pretty quick just then he moved right across in front of sterling marlin that's kind of dangerous move there at the end of that straightaway pitch battle here for third place on back behind jeff gordon and hunt strickland 107 laps complete We'll be right back with you live on TNN. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by RCA. Changing entertainment again. Welcome back to Pocono. Jeff Gordon out in front of this field. Hut Strickland runs in second, third place. Very tight battle. Gordon has led 59 of the 108 laps so far. That's more than half of this race. Mike Hutt was gaining on uh, Jeff Gordon there uh, just a second ago, but he's dropping back just a little bit. The car on the move right now is Terry Labonte in third place. He is moving right up behind uh, the 26th car, Hutt Strickland. The odds are against Jeff Gordon winning this race. In the June race at Pocono, 13 years, and only three times has the driver leading at halfway gone to victory lane. Ernie, we talked about this a while ago. You never let that stand in the way when there's 10 grand out there, do you? No, I think Jeff Gordon's uh, going to do whatever he can do to win this race. That's obviously what he's doing uh, when they started the race. So uh, odds don't really matter right now. There, there may be uh, less odds later, but it could be four <laughs> of them have right. won the race. Here's a look back to the second place car. You think the statistical odds are against Jeff Gordon? No Winston Cup driver has ever scored his first career victory at Pocono in 35 races. Nobody's ever won their first one here. I can tell you one thing. This is a hard racetrack to get around, and you have to have experience to run well here. You see all the guys right now that are up front. They're people that know how to set their cars up. That's never won a race to pop this. See, so this go uh, the odds, like you said, are really against it. I don't it. mean a thing. That checkered flag, <laughs> that checkered flag's what makes the difference. Guys. No, uh, that's true. And, and that's you know, now that we're talking to maybe Caution. his uh, new car owner, Caution is out. Caution. Oh. Debris on the racetrack. Oh, at the tunnel turn. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> 111 laps, and we have only the second caution of the day. It comes out on lap 112. They finally get to work on these cars and yes. make all these quality moves on it that they need to do to make them really fast now. Anyone who did not need a caution flag, please raise your hand. No hands? <laughs> okay. I tell you, about this, this crowd hasn't sat down all day. Why, why'd they even get a seat? 
Yeah, Maybe why buy a seat? All you do to, is stand up on it. Yeah, they ought to do the, the grandstands and not have seats here. I mean, you know, everybody's standing up, watching the race. And now we've got a caution. There's going to be some pit stops. and well, It's getting exciting. It was exciting before, but um, I think that uh, we're going to have a little more excitement. And, you know, we're, we're looking at the, the new car owner for the 26 car. You mean um, Buddy? You mean uh, Buddy? Let's talk about the... Uh, <laughs> We have a truck uh, that is the pace truck, and they pick you up right on this uh, short chute right now. You see him just in front there. That's picking him up, coming toward the front straightaway. That's pace truck Elmo Langley driving that GMC Jimmy. Jimmy. That is Elmo. Going to give Jeff uh, Gordon a pack of ice. Apparently, he's running a little hot in wow. the race car. He, yeah. he normally gets that quite a bit. He usually gets some down his shirt. And, um, other parts you know Jeff, Jeff's a, a really slim guy so he doesn't have much fat to keep him warm or cold. The drivers on the lead lap are entitled to pit under this first lap of caution. There are the first three on the left side of the screen. I think we just explained why I never got any ice in a race. <laughs> <laughs> we got some great stops going on right now. I mean, Three of the best in the business right now with Jeff Gordon, the 26 car with Hud Strickland, and Terry Labonte with the five car. Let's see who wins. Terry Labonte the was the first one to move. Uh, yeah, I tell you, who's going to be the first one out? Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon. Gordon. That's down to the pit road there. He stopped a little further down pit road. I mean, basically, all those guys had just about the same, same uh, amount of time on the stop. 19 cars, like that 18 cars, are posted on the lead lap at the moment. We're under just the second caution of the day. And we'll be right back with you live here on TNN. Welcome back to Pocono. Caution flag pit stops continue. Here's our Peerless Innovation in Racing, brought to you by Peerless Faucet. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Hi, I'm the West Auto team manager. My name is Clyde Booth. I'd like to take some time to show you how we line the rear ends up in these Winston Cup cars. At one point in time, we used to have this string resting on the sidewall. And then from the string, we'd go into the frame rail and make sure the rear end was straight in the car. That was not very accurate. Now we have a new tool that's extremely accurate that enables us to put the strings on these machine pads. We run it down the race car, go into the frame rails, and get the rear end straight. Because whichever way the rear end is heading, that's which way the race car is going to go down the racetrack. Thanks, Clyde. We're getting set for the restart. Jeff Gordon continues to lead. Hut Strickland, Terry Labonte, and Mark Martin. Let's see if we can get a word with the driver of the family channel, Ford, that sits in fifth and wins the cup point standings. Ernie Irvin has the mic. Let's see if Ted Musgrave's on the horn. 150, and then we're going to have to come at like uh, 184. That's Howard Comstock, so we'll the crew chief. See how it works out. Teddy, this is uh, Ernie Irvin up in the booth. You got a copy? Hi, guy. How you doing up there? All right, man. We've just been talking about you. Your, your car is looking really good today. Uh, how's it handling? Well, as everybody was, a little loose to start with. And uh, we had our car fully adjustable, Ernie. And the guys did a good job in the pits. It was a crack car and rubber springs and a few things like that. And it's really going to be good toward the end. Okay, well, you're really putting us a good show on. But uh, we're going to have to uh, get you up front and um, get, get ahead of that 24 car, right? Uh, Ernie, that would be awful tough, but I think we could do it as the race goes on. We're getting a little better as the race goes on. Okay, I just wanted to tell you that no Winston Cup driver has ever won his first race here at, um, at Pocono. So maybe you could uh, do that for us today. But no pressure, right, Ernie? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Ted. <laughs> Ted Musgrave, and thanks to Racing Electronics for providing the in-car communication we have with several of the drivers today. We had a call on the 800 line. Fan wanted to know if his scanner would work at home while he was watching our telecast. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but if you're going to scan the race teams uh, like we're doing here, you have to be here in the grandstand. Uh, those transmitters won't reach your house. Randy? Well, uh, just a couple updates. Uh, I went down and talked to Robin Pemberton on the two team. I said, did you make any changes there under caution that you would have liked to have made but couldn't catch a caution? He said, we need to change the right front spring, and we're not going to be able to do that. So that's about as good as they can get rusty, at least for now. A lot of the guys are saying they're chasing the weather because the sun key keeps popping in and popping out. As far as Sterling Marlin goes, they uh, raised the spoiler up, put around a wedge in the left rear, pulled out the left front fender, around a wedge in for the 26 car. Glenn? 
Well, I mean, I mean, Dale Earnhardt's pits, and they came in a second time. His car's been awfully loose, and he likes them loose, but it's too loose for him. Richard Childress said they put rubbers just about everywhere that they could try to tighten the car up for Dale. Hopefully that they'll get the car back toward the front. Thanks, Len. We're set to go back to green here. We will mention that if you are at the racetrack, you can scan our TNN broadcast in addition to the, to the race teams. On the outside, there's Jeff Gordon. Just behind him in green is Hut Strickland, then Terry Labonte's uh, cereal box, and then the oil can of Mark Martin and Bobby Hamilton, Ted Musgrave. Those are the cars on the lead lap you're looking at in the outside lane. They won't be there for long. Whoa. We're under green. Jeff Gordon just made a move down at Derek Cope going down the front straightaway there. I don't think he intimidated him a bit, though. You see uh, Derek Cope getting in there trying to get that lap back and Gordon's up high. Derek Hope is one lap down. And Hut Strickland's going to take the lead. Hut Strickland to the front. Wayman Strickland Jr. out of Calera, Alabama, puts Kenny Bernstein's Breaker State forward in the wind and into the lead. Now Ricky Craven and Derek Cope are ahead of him. They're trying to get back on the lead lap. Boy, Strickland made the right move in traffic. Now wouldn't be the time to make the offer to Kenny, would it? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that the, the price probably is going up every day. But Something's we got happened a great to the 24 car. He's dropped off the pace quite a bit. You can see yes. him running about eight from that line there. He, he got in line, you know, out of line in the, in the other deal. But uh, I think uh, pretty soon we're going to see Jeff Gordon go back to the front. 115 laps. And here is Strickland putting Derek Cope in the main and tail shampoo for to Bobby Allison. Back one lap down again. He has the preferred line in turn one. He's working on putting him back at lap. But right now, oh boy, does he have him clear. That's awful tight coming off turn two there. Got him. Mike Wallace makes a pit stop. Pit stop under green as we're back. After just the second caution flag of the day at lap 116. Hut Strickland drove for Bobby Allison and finished fourth here in 1991. He's trying to become the first Winston Cup driver to ever score his first career win on this racetrack. Intelligent all, intelligent driver right now. You see him <laughs> going pretty good there. I tell you, Hut Strickland's got a lot to prove to people. What a race car driver. He's won a lot of races on short tracks in different places around the country. He went from unemployed to leading the race. That's pretty neat. From the starter stand, that look. Only, ha only happens in America, you know what I mean? Todd Bodine battling Ricky Craven. That's for position for 20th spot. They're one lap down. Factory stores four to Butch Mott getting underneath Craven. And they're right in and amongst the leaders. Well, Jeff Gordon's in a lot of lap over traffic right now, and he has to be very patient not to make a mistake. He's got a fast car. As you can see, he can move up on him pretty quick, but he don't want to get himself caught in the wreck. Bobby Hamilton leading Ted Musgrave and Rusty Wallace in that group of Pontiac and two Fords. Terry Labonte's Chevrolet and the Ford of Ricky Rudd. You're riding with Mark Martin. Ernie, that rear view mirror, they used to run the four or five panel mirror. This is a little different thing now. It's, it's you know the name kind of what we're, we're looking for. What, what's the kind of name? Convex. 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 It's, it's a little bit different in a, what it actually do, Mark can actually see almost out the right side of his car, out the right side window. Plus, he can see almost out the left side window. Kyle yeah. Petty's off the pace there. It looks like he may have lost an engine. That was our last week's winner, too. Yeah, won't be two in a row for Kyle. That may bring out a caution. He'll have to really worry whether he can get back into the pits or not because he's coasting down the back straightaway, and it's a long ways around this racetrack back to the pits. Stay under green for the moment. There are a couple of places around the backside of the racetrack where a driver can turn into the infield out of harm's way and to keep us. Okay. Most of them aren't brave enough to turn in because uh, <laughs> when, you, when you turn in, it uh, brings you to the walls. I mean, you know, it's basically all the fans um, can be right there in the middle of what is that. But we're going to get a good shot of what maybe happened to Kyle and. Um, upper right corner of your screen, way up in the upper right. There it is. Ooh. Oh, it flamed and everything. So it blew up here at the start finish line. So uh, I don't think he's going to make it back. He's still coasting right, out on the racetrack there. there. He's turning the in, as you turn said, Mike, he's turning into the, the infield right there. That's where the pace truck parks. That's also the entrance to the infield road course here. Well, that's a sharp right turn where you come from high speed down to stop. 
Yeah. And turn left, great passing. Oh, zone, Todd Bodine really loose in front of Strickland there, getting yep. across the tunnel turn. Todd Bodine's one that, that is running really good. Um, he he just about um, got a lap down earlier, but, uh, you know, he's still, uh, I guess he's one lap down, but he's uh, running real, real competitively. And we got Bobby Hillen. Um, right there, and I think he is a lap down too. Right, they're battling for 20th spot as Hut Strickland manages to lap them past. We are 120 laps complete, 300 miles down here at Pocono. We'll be right back. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Ted Musgrave up there battling Rusty Wallace. Wallace just ahead of him and ooh, close, almost contact. Three wide, Labonte's gonna try it on the bottom. And Found an advantage and took it. Clear low, clear low. Musgrave comes back down as Schrader goes past. They were trying to lap past Derek Cope. And as Musgrave rolled out of the throttle, everybody else said time to go. He won't want to talk to you anymore, and he reminded him he's not supposed to win this thing first race here at Pocono. Uh, I think what, what I did was uh, woke him up. He's trying to go towards his lead. <laughs> he's ahead of Jeff Gordon. Bobby Hamilton there in the 43 car on the outside. Ricky Rudd beginning to rumble a little bit. Well, we haven't yeah. really talked about Ricky Rudd all day, and uh, he's one of the better guys that run this racetrack. There's Rudd in the tight fork. Underneath Bobby Hamilton. This will be for a top 10 spot. And Sterling Marlin. Moving back uh, up there behind Morgan Shepard. Let's go to Kyle Petty's pit. Here's Randy. Well, Barry Dotson's got his guys packing up all the stuff. Barry, uh, I guess you let one go here today, but had a heck of a run last week, and you weren't bad today at all. No, we had a good run, Randy. We elected to come in on the, the caution on the fourth lap. Put a spring rubber in because we just got going, and the car was a little bit loose. And we worked our way back up. Uh, kind of held her on with a 24 car. It was a good day for us, you know. The motor broke. Uh, if it weren't running good, it'd be different. But of course, like Pontiac's running really good. And uh, one of those days, we'll take it after last week, I guess. Now you're in another race. We heard you say, pack them up. Let's beat some of this traffic. You got it, man. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Dodson, crew chief for Kyle Petty. Jeff Gordon has been trying to lap past Todd Bodine. This time drives it in deep and gets past Bodine going over the tunnel at turn two. Well, you can see why Jeff Gordon runs well after about eight or ten laps. He has his car set up for the long run. Right at first, I don't think he uh, is loose enough to really get off the corners here. I think the car may have a little push, and then it comes to it at eight or ten laps. You see him moving up behind Hutt Strickland, really gaining on him now. There's Strickland, the race leader. Here's Gordon, the second-place car. Average speed at record pace. There's Terry Labonte down to the inside, trying to haul his Rick Hendrick teammate, Kenny Schrader, with him. Ooh, Robert Presley. That was three wide into that corner. That's yep. not a lot of fun. <laughs> still out there, Kenny. Still out there. Car still alongside Ken Schrader is the call. That was Robert Presley right alongside. Ernie, you hear the spotter now. Way over on the back straightaway telling that driver he's clear. I always look in that mirror myself. How about you? Well, my thought is, is how can that spotter see all the way over there? The only way they can see it is if they can see it on the TV. And it's it's hard for a spotter to, to come and say clear just uh, watching it because we're sitting here in the booth right now looking at those cars a long ways away. And this racetrack is real hard to judge the distance. There's the average speed. Just a little bit off the of record pace after that last pit stop. That record was set by Alan Kulwicki in 1992 at 144 miles an hour. It was his final Winston Cup victory. Came here at Pocono. <laughs> Ernie, a lot of questions on the 800 number about when you were going to get back behind the wheel. You had a test this week? Um, yeah, I, I tested up at Richmond in the truck, and uh, everything went real good. And um, I think we're going to go test again um, next week uh, in a truck again. And just um, keep doing some testing, and uh, pretty soon those doctors will uh, look at me and say, well, you're all right. Here's our 800 number, 800-451-7331. If you have questions about today's race, we'll try to get them answered here on the telecast. And I understand Professor Baker has dusted off his helmet once again. Yeah, I'm going to uh, go to uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia on uh, June 23rd and then the 24th. I'm going down to Dixie Speedway and try a little truck racing, man. Oh, boy. 
Here's Rusty Wallace. Try to get back at Terry Labonte. He's in the middle of a Chevrolet sandwich with his Miller T-Bird. Back down the front straightaway. We're at 126 laps. 74 laps to go here at Pocono International Raceway in the mountains of Pennsylvania. TNN Motorsports live coverage continues right after these messages. Welcome back to Pocono International Raceway and the Teamwork 500. Jeff Gordon is back in the lead. Here's what happened while we were in break. To Jeff lining him up there. He just moves to the inside, cuts off the angle, getting in this flat corner up here and makes the pass pretty easy. He actually made it before he got to the corner. I tell you, that's moving right along down that short chute there to be able to do that. It almost looked like Hunt may have got just a tick loose getting in there, and um, it just Gordon got through there really good. There's Schrader and Labonte working. Brenda calling from New York. Wants to know if we'd ever have Harry Gant as a guest commentator, and does he come out to the races anymore? Harry was signing a bunch of autographs yesterday out of the souvenir trail. Harry Gant can do anything he wants That's to. It. I've seen him do it. <laughs> she did say when Ernie returns to racing. Not like we're going to spin Ernie out. Up yeah. here. Oh. Up here. Kenny Schrader's beginning to really turn up the wick on his car, too. He's gotten by Terry Labonte. Seems uh, some of the old problems he had before he got to adjust on that car, he's fixed because he's really moving well now. Mark Martin running in third. Now there's uh, Morgan Shepard, Ricky Rudd moving in on Rusty Wallace. And this is for eighth place. Morgan's been very fast and very steady all day. He's been working his way up, so, you know, towards the front. And you can see the car is running quite well down the straightaway. Morgan Shepard came in here 11th in the point standings. And over the past three seasons, Morgan's hardly ever been out of the top 10. So they're 34 points back of 10th place right now. Kenny Schrader and Terry Labonte. Rick Hendricks' cars are first, fourth, and fifth. Schrader is fourth, Lavani is fifth, with Jeff Gordon leading all three of those cars on the top five. And here's Robert Presley slowing. Yeah, we had a report that he was smoking about a lap ago, and you see it finally got to him. He's uh, coasting around, trying to get back to the inside of the racetrack. And up front, Hut Strickland has caught Jeff Gordon once again. The Hut isn't giving up. He's, nope. uh, he's going to keep, keep the pressure on Jeff Gordon. Hutt's previous best finish, career-wise, was second, I believe, at Michigan. Mike Fielding nods yes. Mark Martin has moved into our picture frame there. That's the third car you see there, the number six of Mark Martin. Man, I, now, tell I tell you, that's a dangerous move. You see him moving up like that, he can make his thing look, take on a little odor, can he? Yeah, he can. <laughs> and I tell you, get, getting through turn one, Mark, I mean, it was just like the perfect groove through turn one. And, uh, He's obviously got his car handling now. Mark Martin was second going into the Winston Cup points last week, but that crash at Dover on the third lap dropped Mark to fourth in the point standings. Right now, he's third in this race, and the point leader, Earnhardt, is 15th. Third to last car that is still on the lead lap here. 132 laps complete. Let's go down to Hut Strickland's pit. Here's Randy. Well, normally we would be down here talking to Richard Broom, the crew chief on this car, but Richard spots for this team on race day. John Dick is the chief wrench down here right now. John, you've radioed that you've been a little bit loose. First of all, can you correct that for Hutt, get the looseness out of the car, and can you do anything with the 24? Well, I think we can fix it. We can certainly make it better anyway. Uh, I don't know. The 24's got a pretty strong car, but I'll tell you, Hutt's making some magic out there. He's taking the lead. He's trying right now. Yeah, he's driving. And he's got it. He's got it. Power move there with Dave Marcus <laughs> right uh, on the inside. Now look at Gordon try to loosen up that Ford. They both have the same problem. When a car gets up under them, they get loose up off the corner. Mark Martin moves in right on the tail of Jeff Gordon. Oh, Greg Sachs has spun and believe hit the wall before he came off into the infield here. The caution is not out yet, but it will be shortly. I have a feeling. Leaders do not get the caution flag. 
We are green for at least one more lap. 133 complete. Greg Sachs' car was off in the infield grass after spinning off the tunnel turn. Mark Martin, while we were talking, has moved in a second and got his sight set on Jeff Gordon coming out of turn two. You see uh, the 40 car there, Greg Sachs sitting stopped. There's the yellow right now. And uh, Sachs went off at turn one, rather. So they will come around to the caution flag. Hud Strickland's crew chief was probably thinking, of, man, we told him that he had the lead, and he come by in third. Hmm. Sachs gets restarted. Let's show you what happened to Greg Sachs. Might have just brushed the wall there as he spun, perhaps. Mike, he's got a flat left rear. You see it flopping under the wheel well there as he comes to stop. Uh, the left rear is flat. He probably blew a tire coming out of that corner or cut it. Jeff Gordon leads the run back to the caution flag. Mark Martin, Hutt Strickland, Kenny Schrader, Terry Labonte, Ted Musgrave, then it's Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd. As the caution is out at lap 135 for the third time today. Caution actually on the 136th flag. Well, this will probably bring around to pit stops. I would have to say that um, all the leaders and all the lap cars will definitely pit. Uh, they can't make it to the end of the race, but it's definitely going to be one of the deals. Let's show you how Mark Martin got past Hut Strickland. Okay, you can see the 26 car right there. He gets a little bit loose. Jeff Gordon goes to the inside. Now he's cutting this edge off here, and I'm sure the spotter's saying, here comes Mark on the bottom side. Strickland tries to go in on the outside. That's no dice out there. You can see the car get a little bit sideways. Mark sticks it in the corner under him. As we get ready for pit stops, we've had a number of questions about lug nuts and sockets. Uh, sometimes they'd have a lug nut hang in the socket. Have they pretty well got that figured out and cured so that um, when you take those lugs off or when you tighten them up with those high-speed air guns, that a lug nut can't get caught? Well, no, I don't think everybody's got it cured totally, but I think that uh, they've, they've made some different changes and uh, different different um, deals with the, with the sockets. And, uh, you know, right now we're going to have a, a heck of a pit stops coming up. And, probably have a two or three that we can actually watch and I think all right a good stop here are the cars that on the lead lap that can pit on this lap Jeff Gordon Mark Martin Strickland Schrader uh, Terry Labonte Musgrave Marlon Rudd Shepard Jeff Bodine Rusty Wallace Hamilton Brett Bodine Elliott Michael Waltrip Nemechek and Earnhardt. All those cars are on the lead lap. They're making an adjustment on that 26 car. Tighten it up just a little bit, Ernie. Yeah, it sure looks like it. They, they definitely are. Jeff Gordon looks like he's going to beat everybody out of the pits right now. Mark Martin looks like he's probably going to be second. And Hut Strickland right with him. So the lead lap cars have made their stops. Everybody else will be in next time around. We're under caution for the third time today. The Nashville Network's live coverage of Winston Cup Racing for Pocono continues after this. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by RCA. Changing entertainment again. 64 laps, 192 miles left to race here in the UAW GM Teamwork 500 at Pocono. Here's today's AutoZone Tech Fact, brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, best parts in auto parts. Here's Larry McReynolds. If you check the history of the races here run at Pocono, it seems like fuel mileage has always played an issue in the outcome of the event. Teams and engine builders really work hard on getting the most fuel mileage that they can out of their racing engines. That way, hopefully, they can run longer than the other competitors. Another issue that teams have really worked hard on is the fuel pickup. Even though NASCAR mandates the size of the fuel cell, that it has to hold 22 gallons, teams want to make sure they pick up every ounce of that 22 gallons. A lot of little pieces has been made to make sure they do that. For example, this little pickup goes right here in the right rear back corner, and that way, hopefully, it will pick up every ounce of the fuel and will let a team run further than its competitors. Thanks, Larry. There's Jimmy Cox with what we call the lollipop. That stop and go sign at the end of pit road lets the drivers know whether or not they can get out ahead of the pace car or not. We'll be right back. 
Uh -oh, Today's Ford Buddy Baker driving tip is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Last Ford week, lately? We learned how to fix a car that's pushing in the corner. This week, let's fix a loose car. A loose condition in a race car. Something that has to be fixed. The drivers get very uncomfortable with this situation. To fix this in the pits, my brother Randy's gonna tell you what they do for a quick fix. Thanks, buddy. One of the fastest and most effective ways that you can cure this condition is to take a ratchet and you make an adjustment on this corner of the car. It adds weight to this spring by screwing down on it. Another quick fix is to come around and bump the spoiler up. What this does, it increases the down pressure on the back of the car and this will also take away your loose condition. We're ready to go back to green. 137 laps complete. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. Mark Martin's right there with him. Hot Strickland and Terry Labonte. For the restart. Green flag is in the air. Boy, Mark Martin did not get a good restart. Horrible start. I don't know whether he missed a gear or what. What do you think, Ernie? I, I think that um, really I've been watching this and uh, during the first parts, uh, Mark Martin didn't have a very good start too. I think it's the gear ratio that he's got in his transmission. Um, it doesn't have a very good um, low enough second gear. Well, he's lost a couple of spots in the process. There is Gordon, the race leader, then Derek Cope and Jeff Burton each lap down, as is Mike Wallace, the Howard Myers Ford. And it's Hutch Strickland and Terry Labonte in a big gap. And Martin loses a little more ground getting into the tunnel turn. Outside. Outside. Mark Martin's down to the inside. On the outside again. Schrader blasts on by. Yeah, hi. And Martin now hanging with Kenny Schrader. Jeff Gordon leads him across. He's got a big advantage with three lapped cars, including Dick Trickle, separating him from second place Hutt Strickland now. There they are. Strickland, right behind him is Terry Labonte, the third place car. And then Ted Musgrave. You can see those cars when they come up out of that corner. They really bounce quite a bit. You know, this isn't one of the smoothest race tracks we go to. And you can really see that down the front straightaway too. It's uh, been a long time since it's been paved, and you know the the winners aren't real, real good here. So um, the race tracks get rougher. And here we got Hut Strickland gonna gonna get underneath uh, Dick Trickle and gonna go back under the eight car too. Mike, you could see then how soft these cars are sprung when Strickland turned his car to the inside there. It actually broke the rear wheels loose momentarily because of the light springs that kind of lifted all the weight off the left rear of the pulling wheel. I mean, we basically have springs in the cars that uh, that is Three of them coming on just, outside just about like high. um you'd run at Wilkesboro. We, now we're seeing that Mark Martin is having some trouble. It wasn't just uh, the gearbox and um, maybe it's something else. Maybe he's got a cylinder down. They haven't really said nothing on the radio. Never came back up to full yeah, speed I after that restart but they continue to work traffic. Len Jarrett's in his pit. I don't pit. know what's the matter, Steve. I don't either. All right, he's talking to Mark right now. I asked Steve, Steve, what seems to be the problem? Do you know? Well, the radio broke right early on, so it's hard to say. We, you all know about as much as we do. It looks like we're getting beat up the straightaway like it dropped a cylinder or something. Clutch is slipping, maybe won't go in high gear. You know, we change gears here at Pocono. It's just anybody's guess right now. Well, like he says, the ra he still does not have uh, communication with Mark. Earlier, he told me that it just took him a few laps to get going, but uh, now they got a much more serious problem. That's a real shame because they have gotten the car in real good shape. He was about as quick as anybody. That's true, Glenn. Bill Elliott just moved past in the uh, McDonald's Batman Forever car. You know, you never like to stand up here and speculate what the problem is, but right now he's running just as well as Bill Elliott is down the straightaway. Now, here's what happened to Mark, the first indication of that car not, not running all that well after the restart. Look at Mark. Woo. Whoa. He just about got tagged there. Morgan Shepard was coming full head of steam on the outside Sterling Marlin there. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong there. You can see that uh, he was one of the fastest cars before the stop, and now he really don't have the straightaway speed he had. Three. Mark well down off the pace as Dale Earnhardt moves to the inside of Craven. Haven't seen much of Earnhardt today for Ricky Rudd battles with Bobby Hamilton. They were side by side three wide the last time they came past the stripe here. They're fighting for 12th place right now. 
There's Musgrave and Kenny Schrader. Loof. And Ward Burton battling Jeremy Mayfield in the RCA car. And now Bodine pulls up on Ricky Rudd as Hamilton goes up front after Joe Nemechek, Michael Waltrip, and Jeremy Mayfield. Well, Michael Waltrip there, he's still in the same lap as the leaders, and uh, you can see he has a lot of straightaway speed in that car. He goes down into turn two here. One of the things, Michael Waltrip isn't shifting today. He's um, running fourth gear the whole time. That's one of the things I found out in the garage area. As is, Ster as is Sterling Marlin, as we mentioned earlier. Kenny Schrader, Budweiser 25, started here on the pole. Ted Musgrave, Family Channel 16, and the Miller Genuine Draft number two of Rusty Wallace right there. Ted. Back behind leader Jeff Gordon. That is fourth, fifth, and sixth place. Hunt Strickland, second place car in Quaker State Green, and Terry Labonte in third right behind him. A couple of lap cars, and then there's the battle for fourth. Schrader's really hanging it out right now. Uh, he's passed uh, Musgraves now, and, and uh, if there's a Warrior Award today, he has to have it because he yep. has battled back from, you know, dropping way back in the field two or three times, and uh, he's back in contention again. How about this? The two drivers who led the points one week ago are today the last cars on the lead lap, Earnhardt and Martin. Hmm. Things change. Do that. I see Schrader trying to make a move on Trickle on the bottom side. I don't think that's going to work right now. Musgrave moves in. And when they get this close, I don't care how good your car is, it makes the back a little bit loose getting off the corner. Jeff Gordon's lead now more than two seconds over Hutt Strickland and Labonte, and then a gap back to that fourth place battle. Schrader's car really has a motor in it, I tell you. It's, uh, <laughs> every time he keeps hitting that. And and it really shows on the straightaway. Right here is where it shows. When he gets back on the straightaway there, you can see him pulling car, you know, one car length, two car lengths. By the end of the back straightaway there, he'll have a good distance between him and the next car. Yeah. Now Ted Musgrave's got to go to work on the Bud Moore quality care number 15 of Dick Trickle if he's going to keep tabs on Schrader there. This group of cars is <laughs> a bit back of the leader with some lap cars in between. Now Musgraves, he's got to make that move or he's going to lose touch with Schrader. Oh, he has to do that. Here Bye. comes Rusty Wallace, Bye. too. That's Ted Musgraves' spotter you're listening to. Whatever Rusty's problem was a while ago, he seems to have fixed also. He's back up there where it counts, and uh, he's moving in on Musgraves trying to get that spot. It's been a Chevrolet day so far. Second place race. Well, Terry Labonte was trying to put it under Hut Strickland there, but not that time. Strickland really got down in that corner good, and uh, Terry Labonte, not a guy that's going to force the issue. He'll, he'll eat you up, but he'll do it his way. Call the 800 line from Toronto. What's the closest Winston Cup race to go see one? Oh, three wide. Something's got to give. Somewhere. And it's going to be Bobby Hillen. <laughs> clear, clear. Yeah, clear, clear twice. They told Michael Waltrip. Uh, well, closest race. To, well, here comes Ward Burton right back at him. Out of you. Not a lead lap car. And Bobby Helen gets on the Good inside side, too. Oh, no, he, he didn't. And that battle goes. Closest race to Toronto. Well, next week they go to Michigan, Brooklyn, Michigan. That'd be a good one to see if you live in Toronto or Watkins Glen, New York, in August. Close. We've completed 147 laps, 50 laps to go, 125 miles. About three times around. We're told alternator trouble on Mark Martin's car. Not generating sufficient electricity to run everything. We'll double check on that. Here's the way the top ten looks. We'll be right back. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone. The best parts in auto parts. Welcome back to Pocado. I'm Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ernie Irvin. And bright sunshine all the way around Pocono Raceway right now. Here's how Terry Labonte got past Hut Strickland for second place while we were away. Down the front straightaway. And into turn one. So now, two of the Hendrick Chevys run 1-2. Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte. The other Hendrick car, Kenny Schrader, is fourth. There's a look at Terry Labonte's day so far. Started way back in 27th position. 
There's Kenny Schrader in fourth place. Running with Ted Musgrave and Rusty Wallace. Lavona from California wants to know if Rusty's first name is really Rusty. Well, it's Russell. His father is also Russell. Uh, his dad goes by Russ, and he goes by Rusty. Rusty. Now, Mark Martin, uh, we reported, thought they might have an alternator problem. Glenn, is that the case? Well, evidently so, Mike, because they have brought a fresh battery down here. Now, obviously, if the alternator's not working, it's not charging the battery, and the car begins to lose power. So, at the first opportunity, they are going to put a new battery in the car to see if that won't help. But that won't solve the problem, but at least it is a quick fix. I doubt that they'll be able to do anything about the alternator. They'll just try to keep a fresh battery in it. He is 15 seconds behind the leaders. You see Martin shifting fourth to third. There's Kenny Schrader and Ted Musgrave. Musgrave's really had to work lap traffic and all to stay right with Schrader to battle for fourth place. The impressive part of Musgrave's way he's running, you see he dropped about 20 car lengths back, just the lap back. Now he's run right back up on the back of Schrader. He's got a lot going for him, I think. For 12th place, Bill Elliott and Dale Earnhardt battling for 12th place. Earnhardt, the Winston Cup point leader, has spent much of the day hanging around the tail end of the lead lap. And Rusty Wallace almost got past Ted Musgrave. Now the 21 is going to try it. Morgan Shepard moving to the inside there, trying to take the spot away. You see Rusty put his hand out there to let him go. Give, give and take. Give and take, you bet. That's a nice sign when you're going down in that corner that you know he knows you're going to take that spot too. Observant viewer Rick from California sees the little green stickers up on the windshield. He said last week it was orange. How come? I think that's uh, the, the stickers uh, is when you uh, go through tech uh, on Friday. Right. And um, they may change them. And Top center of the windshield there. That little sticker means you have passed inspection for this weekend. The inspector signs it off. Not for the weekend. Not for the day. Excuse Take, me. You're yes, right. Yes, sir. You're right. Because everybody goes through tech inspection right before the race. They go right before tech inspection, right before qualifying, too. So uh, they also go through a tech inspection when they first get here. So before practice, before qualifying, and before the race, three separate times. And after, they usually tear down the winner. They usually tear down, you know, some, somewhat of a tear down for the top five cars. They'll check the body heights and uh, templates and make sure that you don't go through templates and then change it some other way. That means you're positively correct, maybe. Yes. <laughs> There's that sticker. Top center of the windshield on Rusty Wallace's car. Uh, Ricky Rudd has dropped back to the tail end of the lead lap, and they are also reporting potential alternator problems on Ricky Rudd's car. I don't know if it's the magnetic fields here in the Poconos or the weather or just what happens, but it's something. 47 laps to go. Jeff Gordon is on a mission. And we'll be right back with TNN's live coverage after this. Welcome back to Pocono International Raceway. The Teamwork 500 shows Ted Musgrave right now battling Hutt Strickland. And this would be for fourth place. There's Rusty Wallace and Morgan Shepard. Taking sixth away from Rusty. Right now the tires are getting slick and you see the better chassis moving up towards the front. And the number four car, Sterling Marlin coming back into play. Well, just a little while ago, Hutt Strickland was leading and now he's fighting a battle just to stay where he's at. He's dropping back through the field and this is because adlin has gone away just a little bit. Here are the cars on the lead lap as we have 43 laps to go. Jeff Gordon the leader, Terry Labonte is second. Kenny Schrader third, all three of those race cars owned by Rick Hendrick and powered by Hendrick Engines. Fourth is Hutt Strickland, fifth is Ted Musgrave, sixth now. As we have a look down the field, it's going to be Morgan Shepard and seventh will be Rusty Wallace. Also on the lead lap, there's Sterling Marlin, Michael Waltrip, Bobby Hamilton, along with Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. That battle continues. Oh, Morgan. And there it is. Bill Elliott going right back after Earnhardt. Think it's the black paint? I don't know. These guys have raced some great races together. They're just having a good time right now, but they're not happy where they're at in the field, I can yeah. guarantee you. And Brett Bodine's fighting right with them for position. Let's go down to Earnhardt's pit. Well, Mike, these guys have had an awfully frustrating day, and Andy, all of our viewers are calling in. They want to know what's wrong with the number three car. Yeah, I think I was one of them that called. 
We'd like to know too. We've been working on it all my heart today. We just set up a little bit. We've been working on it trying to do good. I think if we could get a little better tractor this year, we'd do better on it. Has it gotten any better with the adjustments you've made? Yeah, we can make it worse, but it's going to make it any better. We made it, it's, it's been loose to start with, and we tried to tighten it up, and that just made it worse. So we went back to our old setup. Awfully tough to just to make a guess like you had to do here. Well, it didn't look like it's too tough for a lot of these guys, but it's tough for us. Okay, like he said, he was one of those guys that placed one of those dogs. I'll tell you, they're taking it in stride. Mike, he said he could make it worse, but he couldn't make it any better. Boy, that's no. a bad situation. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when he said he was one of the guys that called. Yeah. <laughs> Operators are standing. Bye. Morgan Shepard trying to take the fifth spot away from Strickland, coming off the corner of the side by side down the front straightaway. A lot of room between them, and everybody's going to line up with Strickland. Well, Rusty's going to go with Morgan Shepard, who will take the position. Hutt knows he's off. You see he's staying on the outside there. He's not pulling down on Sterling. Sterling makes the pass. He's trying to figure out how he's going to make it to the next pit stop before he adjusts on this car. Sterling Marlin just in front of Strickland. Had a number of comments on the 800 line about why Sterling Marlin didn't get penalized for that collision that sent Dale Jarrett into the wall. NASCAR officials looked at the same replay as you did, judged it was a racing accident, did not choose to assess any penalty. That is their call. 41 laps to go. Jeff Gordon leading his Hendrick teammates, Terry Labonte and Ken Schrader with Ted Musgrave in fourth, Hut Strickland there, and Morgan Shepard at fifth. Today's exclusive coverage of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 on TNN is brought to you by RCA, Changing Entertainment, again. Welcome back to TNN's live coverage from the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. Battle for third, Ted Musgrave has caught Kenny Schrader. Ted Musgrave uh, in the past couple of weeks has shown me a lot of maturity and he works on this car during the race. Look how he gets in the corner here. He's gaining on Schrader really fast getting in the corner. He's hooked up. He'll make the pass on him before too long. His team manager Howard Comstock, one of the nicest guys in the garage area and a bunch of hard workers on that Jack Roush team. They have caught Schrader. Musgrave is in fourth place, the highest placed Ford in the race right now. Uh, about to be third perhaps. Top five in front. He's doing quite well this year. And he may move ahead of his teammate Mark Martin into fourth in the point standings as they run right now. Schrader doesn't want to give up that third spot down in turn one, does he? Oh, it's gone. It's just a matter of time here when he gets back in the throttle right here. Goodbye. <laughs> Professor Baker from the Buck Baker Driving School telling you that. Well, it don't take long to figure it out. Uh-oh. He's off the pace there in the 16 car. He pulled way over to the left-hand side. Uh, he uh, just went in to try to break the draft from Kenny Oh, Schrader. man. Just for a moment there. I'm, you I almost him go me. hard left. This whole state of Wisconsin, buddy, just had heart failure. Well, so did I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. And car cameras. I was watching that, and I seen him pull way over. I, I forgot I used to do that, a whole bunch of that, Ernie. I remember you doing that. Uh-huh. Well. He's pulling away from Schrader, too. I don't know, I don't know if I remember it. But oh, yeah. I know. <clears throat> they, we, they had TV in Modesto, they then, didn't they? Yeah. They, they did the use air in the tires. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll answer did. that before you ask me. Oh, you, you, you knew I was going <laughs> to say you soaked your tires, huh? Sure enough. Yeah, I think you soaked them in water, right? A lot of people would ask, why do you move around on the racetrack trying to break the draft? Well, he feels that he's much quicker down the straightaway without greater help, so he's trying to get rid of him right now. Maybe he has a pushing problem when he's right up behind him or a loose problem, so he wants to shake him off there so he can use everything he has in that car to try to catch up. That's a good point, buddy. Schrader started today's race on the pole. He has led a couple of times here, but right now runs in fourth behind Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, and now Ted Musgrave. Thirty-eight laps to go. We'll come back and show you the last round of pit stops here in just a bit, so let's take this pause from the Poconos. We'll be right back with you live on TNN.
Well, welcome back to the Poconos here where the leader, Jeff Gordon, has just made what is hoped to be his last green flag pit stop, and it was not a good one. They had trouble on the left rear of the car. It was, uh, we've got it timed at 20.8. I think that might be a little fast. They, uh, the crew's a little upset with themselves right now. Had trouble on the left rear, but he is down and away again. As I said, should be his last stop if we go green the rest of the way. Thanks, Glenn. Terry Labonte beat him off pit road. Does not take the lead. Ted Musgrave does. The Wisconsin driver, former ASA star. Behind the wheel, Jack Roush's Thunderbird, the Family Channel car, leads Kenny Schrader. There's the advantage. It's about three to four car lengths. A lot of questions on the 800 line as you look at this in-car cam review. We come back about, sometimes you'll see uh, wires hanging down that don't connect to anything. Those are the tethers like that for the roof flaps on the cars. And so when the car turns around back to the wind as you watch uh, the battle side by side between Gordon and Labonte, those allow the roof flaps to come up but only so far and then drop back down once again. It looks like they're not connected to anything but they're doing their job properly. Michael Waltrip and Brett Bodine make a pit stop. As does Rick Mast. Last round a green flag stops underway. And here comes Ted Musgrave in. Leader is in for his final stop of the day. As is Kenny Schrader right with him. Let's go to Randy. Well, Howard Comstock waits for Ted Musgrave. Boom, he hits it. Right side tires already going on. Ted with maybe his best run. He had one going last week at Dover. We said that was his best run, but I think this might be a great run here at Pocono. Around to the left side. 16 car goes up on the left side. Tires going on, no problems, no chassis adjustment. He's down and away. Excellent stop for Musgrave's team. 19-6. Nice stop for Ted Musgrave's crew. Now remember last week, many people thought Musgrave would have won the race, but they had a bad stop on their final pit stop, and he got back out third. So once again, Morgan Shepard assumes command of this race in the Sitco Ford. Well, Morgan get a caution right now. He'd be in the catbird seat, but that's not going to happen. It don't look like as we speak. It looks like he's coming towards pit road right now. Morgan Shepard is in, and Randy Pemberton's there. Well, the Leonard and Glenn Wood team wait for Morgan. Boom, he comes in. No, nope, not a problem here. He doesn't even get a slide to the stop. He comes in nice and smooth. Go to work on the windshield, get it nice and clean for Morgan. Second can of gas already in. Lug nuts are left, already loose on the left side. Had to wait a little while for the jack. Can't get the jack under the left side of the car. Finally get it hit. Tires going on. Not the cleanest pit stop, but I'm not sure how bad they are on time. Down and away. Morgan does not stall the car. 21-6, not quite what they wanted. Hut Strickland is pitted well further down pit road and gets out before Shepard. There you see the difference. Two or three seconds can make on pit road. I, when you make a pit stop like that, you say 21 seconds opposed to 18 seconds. If you put that on a racetrack, you're talking 200 yards. And that can be a whopping distance. You're also talking thousands of dollars if that's how it ends up at the end of the day. Here are your leaders. Terry Labonte behind Jeff Gordon. Jeff's car is a little quicker on fresh tires. Uh, I think Terry Labonte's car may be just as good after about 10 or 15 laps. But Terry likes his car very secure in the corner. He don't like it to slide around where Jeff will hang on a little bit. You know, we keep commenting on the Hemet's engine zone. Also a comment that those cars are built by Rick Hendricks' shop. So um, not just the, the bodies and that sort of stuff, but also the frames and everything. You know, most people get their cars from Mike Laughlin and some other places, but, you know, those guys build their own chassis and everything. Big complex they've got there near the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And different satellite locations around the area. You know, Mike, looking at this 24 car go around the racetrack here of Jeff Gordon, it looks almost flat. Years back, they used to put rake in cars, thinking that give them great stab stability on the back. But now they found out if they can get this weight distributed from the front to the rear and really tack that car down, it's much better than having that rake in it. Yeah. Easy enough for me to say, Ernie kind of stuck his tongue out. And, yeah, I do that a lot. Did I do that? Yes, he did, folks. I was watching the monitor. 
as Kenny Schrader and Rusty Wallace battle. Lake Speed has just made a pit stop. Another Chevy versus Ford matchup here. And this would be for fourth place. This racetrack was designed to emulate three different speedways for IndyCar racing. Turn one resembles Michigan with a steep banking. Turn two, Indianapolis with only an eight degree banking. And turn three, Milwaukee, nearly flat. Each straightaway is a different length. Each turn has a different radius and a different banking. This means that you will have one corner where you're better than maybe the next corner. If you set your car up for the flat part of the racetrack, you're in good shape. You don't want to worry about one and two. You kind of bounce through there anyhow. <laughs> Here are the pit stop times as Jeff Burton slows the Ray Bestus forward to a crawl. And Hutt Strickland again had the best pit stops. Been that way all day. Yeah. Back to the slow car. Going into the tunnel turn on the bottom. Slow one turn. Schrader and Wallace continue their battle for fourth place. I wonder if Jeff knows about the turn off over there. If he stays on the racetrack, that'll bring a yellow out, sure. First 500-mile race held here was an IndyCar race, 1971. Mark Donahue won it. They roll past Jeff Burton's car. See if he'll make the turn in onto the road course there. It doesn't and, uh, look like he's going to make it. No, what they call devil's elbow. Whatever was wrong with Rusty Wallace in the early part of the race, he is flying right now. They've made some adjustments. Apparently, he's going by Kenny Schrader down the front, front straightaway, side by side, coming past the start finishing line there. It doesn't look like the eight car turned in um, through the tunnel deal. No, he's still out on the racetrack, Ernie, and he's almost to a stop. Yeah, it looks like we may have another caution. At the entrance of three, Kenny, just past Elmo. Those were the Kenny's um, spotters. Saying that there's Jeff Burton just passed where the pace car, excuse me, pace truck pulls out. They're looking right now. It won't caution. be long before the There it is. Fourth caution of the day. NASCAR is not going to be happy with Jeff Burton. Nope. Because uh, that's some of, one of the things they say in the driver's meeting. You know, if you can't make it all the way around or if you're wounded, you pull into that deal so you don't cause a caution. So evidently, Burton thought he could make it all the way around. 27 laps to go. But well, it makes us have a better race. Now we can. <laughs> well, we can have. Uh, what? Now I know there are folks sitting home wearing their bow ties, saying, "Oh, a Chevrolet is leading, so the Ford parked out on the racetrack." But folks, you, nah. you're so busy worrying about your own race car, I can't imagine you'd have time to figure all that out. Uh, I hadn't figured out how that could ha could happen, you okay. know, but but um, yeah, I mean, you know, people could think that, but you know. we don't expect that. We don't, th we don't think that's anybody the case. knows Jeff Burton knows he wouldn't do that again. With. He's a tremendous competitor, and uh, that's he thought he could make it back to pit road. I'm sure. So we're under caution for the fourth time today. Leaders Jeff Gordon will stop, as will Terry Labonte. Ted Musgrave is third, Rusty Wallace is fourth. It's Chevy, Chevy, Ford, Ford as we go to caution. Now, two tires or four tires? You have fuel to go the distance, so you're not waiting for the fuel to be put in on this stop. What do you do? Mike, it's the same reason you make the big bucks up here. Those guys down there know what they're going to do. I'm not going to second guess those guys. They make the big bucks to make these checkered choices here. Well, it'll be choice time here in just a second. There is Jeff Gordon's pit, and Ray Everham has been known as a bit of a gambler. Let's see what they'll do. There are the two Chevys in the top upper left of the screen, and the Fords right below. I, I would say we may see some two-tire stops, but it's, I don't think it's going to be from the guys that are right up front. Wouldn't surprise me. Bobani comes to a halt. Musgrave is already getting his right side tires go to work on Jeff Gordon's car. The question is, what are they doing on the left side? Labonte will take four. Musgrave got two. Yeah, there you go. And he'll be first out. Jeff Gordon is just now beginning to take on the left side tires. They had a problem again, it looks like. Ted Musgrave wins the dash down pit road as Jack Roush gambles on two tires. 
hundred and seventy five laps down twenty five to go here in the Pocono zone. We'll be right back with TNN's live coverage after this. Welcome back to Pocono as they line back up after caution. Jeff Burton's car has been pushed back to pit road after coming to a halt between turns two and three. 24 laps to go. You can cruise on the big red boat on the NASCAR family cruise December 4th through 7th. Benefiting the Winston Cup Racing Wives Auxiliary. Some Winston Cup drivers and their families will participate. For more information, watch future TNN racing events. Look at the drivers who are still looking for that first win and closing in on it. Each one of these six have had top five finishes this year. But still have found victory lane elusive. Todd Bodine, Steve Grissom, Bobby Hamilton, Ted Musgrave, Hutt Strickland, and Michael Waltrip. You know, we've seen Bill Elliott out there running along a while ago. He's showing in third place right now. That's really up there. We might check. I wonder if he only got two tires on that last stop. Let's Took on two tires. Let's go down to Glenn. Well, Ray Abraham, I know that you thought about it, putting two on, but you decided to go with four. Uh, hopefully your last uh, pit stop of the day. Everything okay with the car? Is he ready to go to the end? It was a little tight on that set. I hope it's going to be, uh, I hope it's going to be okay. You know, we'll just have to say our prayers. Terry looks pretty strong. Got a lot of traffic to come through, but... You know, we've had a good day, and I just uh, hope we can finish on a good note. Well, Mus uh, Musgrave took on only two. Can you get back by him? I hope so. You know, if Jeff's patient, uh, I, I hope we can get back by. You know, like I said, we're just going to have to wait and see. And uh, I want to say hi to Pop Hendrick. He's back home still recuperating, and, and uh, at least our, all of our cars are running good. But I hope it's ours that brings home the trophy. Well, good luck on this final run. Let's go down to the 16th bit with Randy. Well, team manager Howard Comstack stands on the wall. Howard, you got the lead, but you only have two fresh tires on there. A bunch of them got four. I guess you think that's the right thing to do. Well, we were the last ones to stop on that round of green flags, so our tires had the fewest laps on them. We only had like four or five hard laps on them. The left side tires aren't wearing out. They've, the wear's been real good, so track position's real important. We got to take a chance. No doubt about it. Ted Musgrave going after his first. Today might be the day. And he might break the record that Pocono International Raceway has had in denying every NASCAR driver his first win here. Here are the cars on the lead lap as we get set for the restart. There's Ted Musgrave, your leader. Right behind him, you see number 24, Jeff Gordon. In third, in Batman Black, is Bill Elliott, number 94. Then in fourth, there's the Kellogg's car of Terry Labonte. In fifth, number two, Rusty Wallace. In sixth, 25, Kenny Schrader. Seventh, that green number 26, that is Hut Strickland. In eighth, number 30, there's Michael Waltrip. Back in ninth, number four, Sterling Marlin. In 10th, number 21, Morgan Shepard. 11th, number 43, Bobby Hamilton. 12th is number three, the point leader, Dale Earnhardt. 13th, the defending champion of this race, number seven, Jeff Bodine. 14th is the number 11 of his younger brother, Brett Bodine. And 15th, number 87, Joe Nemechek. Finally, 16th, number six, Mark Martin's on the tail end of the lead lap. Hanging in there, though. He didn't give up. He's still trying to make it, you know, and stay in the lead lap. This is point time. 23 to go. Well, that answered that. 23 to go. Out of the race, Darrell Walter after just two laps. Jimmy Spencer, though he is now in relief of Jimmy Horton, uh, who was overcome by fumes. Randy LaJoy is in the garage area. So is Kyle Petty. And the 33... Robert Preston. Ricky Rudd starting on the inside here. He'd like to get a lap back, I'm sure, but I don't think so. Roy Burton gets a real jump on the outside there. And Burton was on the tail end of the lead lap. That's why he started up there in front of Ted Musgrave. Down to turn one, and Rudd gets back on the tail end of the lead lap. Up front, it's Ford, Chevy, Musgrave, and Gordon. These things sort out here. Mark Martin up against Joe Nemechek there. 15th place is that battle. For the lead. Gordon looks low, inside. Low, right low. there. Ted said, no, no, I'm going to go ahead. He drove her right down in the corner. Gordon knows he has a good race car. He backed out just a little bit. Look at this. So three wide down through the short shoot. Terry Labonte drags Rusty Wallace down the inside. Underneath Dick Trickle's lap car, Rick Mast. Fighting along there is battling Trickle for 20th place, one lap down. Uh -huh. 
21 laps to go. Like a big snake coming down through there. Everybody's drafting this, this racetrack down the front straightaway. You're running just like Daytona Talladega. You draft down through there. There's a tremendous amount of advantage to having a good running mate right now. Gordon looks inside again. He's got the room on Musgrave this time. I'll be clear behind him. You'll be clear behind him. He'll take that spot going Hello. in the corner here. Hello. Musgrave knows he's good. Now he wants the 24 car to slide out just a little bit. He'll try to get back under him on the inside now. Ernie's there, but he just can't seem to get back under Gordon. Yeah, I tell you, it's real tough. You know, Gordon's uh, motor definitely plays effect, and he has a lot of power, and the car handling really good, too. Right behind them, Bobby Hill in one lap down in 19th place. Good deal, 20 laps to go. So before, Musgrave had to hang on to Ken Schrader. Now he's got to try to hang on to Jeff Gordon. Just behind him, you see Bill Leggett moving to the inside of Bobby Hill and trying to get that position there. He's got a lot of people right there trying to take that spot away from him. Uh, Terry Labonte's right on his backside there in the two cars of Rusty Wallace. Behind them, Kenny Schrader. All battling for position on the lead lap here. 20 laps to go. There's the lead. Gordon stretches it out to about three car lengths. Wow, that car looks awfully, awfully strong. Uh, Ted Musgrave's car, I think, is good after about 10 laps. They're on the green. When they drop the green, it takes him a little while to get going. And right now, Gordon motoring. Ted Musgrave has a second, two-thirds, a fourth, and two sixth-place finishes this season. Fifth in the points. Still looking for win number one. And a smile from his banker, I'll tell you what, that's <laughs> pretty good. Terry Labonte drops it down to the inside on lap car Bobby Hillen. And he also overtakes Bill Elliott going into turn one. Bill got caught on the outside there. You see him trying to get back down low. Rusty's under him. Very close. Rusty moves to the inside as they come off turn two. Burgers and beer battle there between Elliott and Wallace. Oh, well. <laughs> 18 laps to go this time by. Jeff Gordon stretches it out just a bit. Oh, one blows up right in front of him, Ward Burton. Everybody's going to get by. But did the field pack up behind Ward Burton? What a tense moment. No caution as yet. We'll see if Burton's car fires and moves. It does not yellow flag. What a tense moment. Wow, that could have been a huge wreck right there. And what a break for Ricky Rudd. He gets back on the lead lap. The rest of the pack comes to the line. And we're under caution. Mike, that's the reason you run your heart out when you're lapped down. Things like that happen. You get back in there again. I'm not sure if Burton blew up or if that was just tire smoke from the spin, buddy. Well, he's already in trouble there. You see the rear tires lighting up like he had power there. He's spinning the rear wheels, so yep. uh, it might have just been a spin out. Yeah, I saw the smoke first. It appears it was tire smoke. That's Ward Burton lost it coming off the tunnel turn, but he is running. The car comes around and is running, so last year's second place finisher continues on, and we'll be right back to Pocono after this. Welcome back to Pocono. I'm Mike Choi with Buddy Baker and Ernie Irvin. Getting ready for what could be the final restart of the day. There will be 16 laps to race when they come around. Here are the lead lap cars as they line up. Jeff Gordon is the leader as the pace truck makes its left turn to go uh, back into the infield. Ted Musgrave in second. Terry Labonte in third. Bill Elliott's fourth. Kenny Schrader's fifth. Sixth is Rusty Wallace. Seventh, Morgan Shepard. Eighth, Bobby Hamilton. Ninth. Hutt Strickland, 10th Michael Waltrip, 11 is Sterling Marlin, 12th is Dale Earnhardt, 13th Jeff Bodine, 14th is Mark Martin, 15th is Brett Bodine, 16th is Joe Nemechek, 17th is Ricky Rudd. A number of those cars made pit stops under this caution flag, including Rudd and Earnhardt. Let's get back at it. Doyle Ford holds the green flag and now waves it. We're back racing. 16 to go. Jeff Gordon got a huge jump there. He's trying to get away from this bunch behind him. I don't think it's going to help him much to get that jump because they're really flying down in this corner. You see Musgrave right there on the bottom, right behind him. Terry Labonte up high around Rick Mast. Derek Cope is there battling Mast for position. That's 19th spot. So 
that's a battle in amongst the race leaders. Here comes Schrader to the inside of Bill Elliott right there. Terry Labonte needs to clear these lap cars. You see him hung up on the outside there. He's losing contact with the leaders by running the outside of the racetrack. Riding with Ken Schrader behind Dick Trickle, who's also battling with that group one lap down at 20th place. Bill's running real well. You see him, uh, the two car just behind him there, the 94 car, Bill Elliott. He's running quite well into the corner there as he comes down the front straightaway. Trader goes all the way to the bottom to try to clear those lap cars. Rusty Wallace is not going with him. Now Wallace drops inside, and Schrader clears all but Rick Mast. Heads up move by Schrader. The Rusty's car getting offline just a little bit. Bell's right up under him. Here comes Morgan Shepard up on the left rear corner. Three wide. Bobby Not Hamilton before. way <laughs> down the bottom. Way down the bottom. Three wide up to the tunnel turn. And Morgan drove in on the outside of the tunnel turn. Wow. Oh, and he's got the 15. Clears him. That's a problem. Bobby's caught down low. He knew his entry into that corner was the wrong angle. We've seen what happened in the Western Oak uh, Select when uh, we saw the three-car try that of Dale Earnhardt. He didn't quite make the corner. This time, he said, I'm not going in that hard. Hamilton did. Gordon leads it. Musgrave tries to break the draft on Terry Labonte. Doing the Neil Bonnet weave down the front straightaway here. Boy, Terry is strong. Now, he is really flying up through there. He was hung up in traffic. Now he's clear. He's in second place and moving up. Chevy, Chevy Ford. Didn't you say that uh, Terry Labonte was going to be tough today, huh? Well I, I, well, I said that about a lot of cars today, but this particular car is really strong, and uh, I wouldn't count him out yet. Three really wide right there. Somebody better check up. Well, that's two separate races. It's Elliott versus Wallace, and it's Derek Cope. He's battling Rick Mass. They're both fighting for position. Because Derek Cope and Rick Mass are a lap down. So, right. Uh, the other two are uh, on the lead lap. They're fighting for 18. While Wallace and Elliott fight for fifth. See Hamilton there in the 43 trying to pass on the outside. If he makes that, and he did, I tell you, that's the muscle. Oh, Whoa. around goes one car. Rusty Wallace misses the end of pit wall. We stay green. Wallace drops the clutch and the hammer, and in a cloud of smoke, gets back up to speed. We'll stay green. I'll say the replay will tell you what happened there because I did not see it. I didn't either. Heartbreaker for Rusty Wallace. It drops him to 17th. Twelve laps to go next time by. As Gordon laps past Mike Wallace, whose car owner Junie Donlevy celebrates his 700th Winston Cup race today. What happened? Wow, he's all by himself. He just gave her a lot of get, uh, throttle coming out of the corner, and the car turned around on him. He's yeah. been loose. You know, we reported earlier, he's having trouble getting loose coming out of the corner. And that time, it just walked around on him. We'll be back with the final 10 laps of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 of Pocono after this. Crash in turn three, just as we come back, that is Poncho Carter in the equipment supply number 78. He has brought the caution out here at lap 188. Poncho's wreck brings the caution flag for the sixth time today. Wow. This changes everything now. It's going to be a drag race to the finish. Battling back for third place. To the line. Schrader outside of Ted Musgrave. You see Rusty Wallace has gone a lap down. Sorry about that, Gideon. What? And we're on caution. To the garage goes Pancho Carter. Kenny Schrader kept the power on and moved into third place. So that's three Hendricks cars on the restart here. Wow. There's Dave Marcus right behind Pancho Carter. Uh-oh. <laughs> well... Uh, I guess we don't have to tell you what happened. Well, it's been a tough day for Dave Marcus. He crashed yeah. last week at Dover, uh, has cracked a couple of ribs, 
and said he could not afford to bring a driver up here to run for him. Had to run the whole race today. So Marcus driving hurt, soldiering on. And we'll be right back to Pocono after this. Nine laps to go here at Pocono International Raceway. You look at Ray Evernham, who is the Western Auto Mechanic of the race. Crew chief for Jeff Gordon. Had that car out front most of the day here and has to keep it out front for nine more laps. And our RCA Pit Strategy Award brought to you by RCA, changing entertainment again for the consistently quickest pit stops all day long. John Dick, the crew chief today for Hut Strickland, receives that award from us. Great stops here. all day, Bob, yeah. Here at TNN. As we get set for the restart next time by. See Mike Walter player. He's still in this thing too. Miller Genuine Draft pit crew of the race. Brought to you by Cold Filter and Miller Genuine Draft and Genuine Draft Light taking the country by storm. <coughs> Jeff Gordon's crew once again. Chosen by our TNN panel of experts. Light is out atop the safety truck. All seven of them. <laughs> Lights, that is. Eight laps to go. Green flag next time by. And because we have less than ten laps to go, this will be a single file restart. All the cars in the lead lap first, then the cars that are one or more laps down. That will prevent the kind of Rick Mask, Derek Cope in battling in the midst of Rusty Wallace, Kenny Schrader, Bill Elliott that we saw on the last restart because we are less than ten laps to go. Three team cars starting out on the front. Wow. One, two, three. All owned by Rick Hendrick. Here's fourth place, Ted Musgrave, the first Ford. Fifth place is Bill Elliott. Sixth is Hut Strickland. Seventh is Michael Waltrip. Eighth, Morgan Shepard. Ninth, Sterling Marlin. In tenth, Brett Bodine. Good run today. As we get set to go, back behind them, You'll find Bobby Hamilton, Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, and Joe Nemechek, the cars on the lead lap. Mike, I love these single re uh, car restarts. When they start back now, you don't have lap over cars on the inside to take that groove away, so it's down to the guys that have earned this spot now in the last 10 laps to show what they have. Good point. Uh, battling one lap down, Rusty Wallace, Derek Cope, Rick Mass, Steve Grissom, Dick Trickle, Ward Burton, Bobby Hillen. Then two laps back, Jeremy Mayfield, Ricky Craven, along with Todd Bodine and Bobby Labonte. This is it, folks. Seven laps to race. Jeff Gordon hauls them off the corner. Not yet. Not yet. Doyle says hold it down. There's the green. Whoa. Uh, he missed a shift. Just like well, something shift. happened to the 24 car on the restart there. Yep. Big puff of smoke from Jeff Gordon's tailpipes. Glenn, what happened? Well, Mike, I'll, I'll make my way down to Victory Lane, but from here it absolutely looked like it, uh, the engine blew. It's, it's missing real bad. He, oh, he missed a gear. He did miss a gear. Let's wow. go down to Randy. Randy? Just missed a gear, guys, is what they're saying so far. But uh, we're getting a little more information as we speak. I believe he might have uh, got a little valve problem as well. So maybe it's the valve. Uh, maybe he dropped the valve, guys. When but, you miss it, when you yeah, missed the shift, exactly it, right, though. Yeah, when you miss the shift, it really goes up. He probably turned 10,000 right then. Watch the right or left side of Jeff Gordon's car right there. Definitely miss the shift. Uh, it's kind of hard to do with a Jeff. Hey, give a uh, call to Terry Labonte for not running right over top of him. Right. Now, Terry Labonte, we're told he is being overcome by fumes, and he says, when I come in, I need some oxygen. Let's go to Randy. You are exactly right. He radioed the crew. He said, guys, I am not feeling well. Whatever happens, have some oxygen standing by after this race. They may have to give it to him in victory lane. Terry Labonte's leading. I bet he feels better now. Yeah, he's definitely uh, leading. It really will help him feel better, but he hadn't worn yet. Let's give a call to Kenny Schrader. Sitting there in second place, he hadn't called anybody. He's on the move towards the front right now. He's, he's fought from the back two or three times today. Now he's moving in on Terry Labonte. Jeff Gordon will not win his fourth race of the season today. There are the leaders, two Chevys and a Ford. Labonte, Schrader, 
and Ted Musgrave in the four of them the driver that most needs a victory perhaps Schrader who's gone winless for the last 120 starts wants to pick up that Unical bonus money for winning from the pole Musgrave who's never won but they've got to catch Terry Luani then they've got to beat him six laps to go or five laps rather look at Hutt Strickland making a move on the inside there he tried he look, made one look there trying to get under Musgrave he's up to fourth place now in the 26 car he's really got it on the map Two drivers who've each been the bridesmaid and he's, he's looking got for the big bouquet. He's got a run on Hut Strickland uh, or actually uh, Teddy Musgrave. Right Inside. Here. But what will that do to those two Chevrolets? Puts them further out front. That's for sure. Don't count Hut out, though. He's making a move right now. He pushed out just a little bit. Musgrave's trying to counter the move there on the inside as he come into the flat corner towards the front straightaway. Clear high. Musgrave holds him off. Jeff Gordon falls to the Pocono Jinx. Only three drivers had led this race at halfway and gone on to win. He did not become the fourth. Labonte, four car lengths over Kenny Schrader. Terry Labonte, winner at Richmond. Ken Schrader trying to complete the one-two sweep for Rick Hendrick. Terry Labonte started in 24th spot, now leading the race. He would be the first guy to come from that far back and win. Just a handful of laps to go. Musgrave third. Fourth, Hutt Strickland. Kenny Schrader has 84,600 extra reasons for wanting to win this race. That's that wow. skins game bonus that keeps building $7,600 a race until somebody wins from the pole. Well, when you get down to it right now, Terry Labonte could care less about that, and I tell you, that's pure adrenaline right now. He does not know he's overcome by fumes right now. He's winning the race. He'll feel great until he gets out in the fresh air. But this is the Pocono zone, and how many strange things have we seen happen here. Terry looks like he's definitely better than Kenny right now, and uh, they only really have two more laps left, so um, kind of tough to get on. The four cars uh, passing Bill Elliott for uh, fourth or fifth. Sterling fought his way back into contention. Now look at Michael Walter yes. move in behind Bill Elliott, trying to take that spot away. He moves to the inside down the short shoot. Couldn't make her happen. Bill's got his foot in it. At the top of the day, it looked like Marlon might go stink up the whole show. He took off and built himself a big lead. Then the car went away and they've had to fight back and have done a good job doing so. Wow, you see those cars come by that camera. From out way up here, it looks like they're running pretty slow. You see that speed shot right there on the front straightaway. Those things look like they're running 700 miles an hour through there. <laughs> There's Marlin in fifth. Sixth. Back there with that group. Bill Elliott, Michael Waltrip. Uh-oh. Schrader's got more trouble than worrying yeah. about winning the race right now. He's got company. Musgrave moved in on the back of him there. Remember, what long ago that Teddy was uh, racing uh, against Hunt in the 25 car was actually pulling away. Terry Labonte had this Speedway's best come from behind win. It came in 1989 when he started 23rd. Musgrave to second. Boy, this is a replay of last week. He moved in with just a few laps to go. He's flying through here. And Michael Walter battling Morgan Shepard, and here comes Earnhardt. Where did he come from? Flag one. White flag. flag. One. Suddenly, Earnhardt's car is ablaze with power as he sweeps past Michael Walter. See Sterling Marlin moving under Hunt Strickland, getting in the corner there, taking that spot away. Wow. Hey, the 16 or the 16 car is probably the best car in the racetrack besides the four car. It's just too too far to go in this amount of time. You know, you know, we're on the white flag lap right now. And, um, you know, Terry Labonte pretty much has everything in hand. Doyle Ford reaches for the checkered flag, and around turn number three will come Terry Labonte with Ted Musgrave trying to close in, but Labonte. Looks to be poised to pick up his second win of the season and the 15th of his career. Single file, off turn three, very close from third on back. 
the victory. Terry Levani wins it, 15th of his career. Ted Musgrave second. Schrader holds off Sterling Marlin and Hutt Strickland. And we get in the whole 500 mile. Boy, oh boy. Terry Labonte, when he gets in the lead, that's one of the toughest men I've ever seen to make any ground on. Texas Terry Labonte, the Iceman, is the winner of the UAW GM Teamwork 500. Y'all meet him in victory lane after this. Welcome back to Pocono International Raceway. TNN's live coverage, Terry Labonte has rolled into victory lane. Glenn Jarrett's with him. Okay, well, Terry getting congratulations from his crew here. He's a little bit winded. He was calling for a little bit of oxygen. Terry started from 27th furthest anybody has ever come back. Started today, it just didn't look like this would happen, did it? Well, uh, I held the record before for the starting the farthest back and winning here, so uh, we weren't too worried about starting back there. Uh, I don't know, we went and talked to, uh, to Kenny Schrader and, and Jeff Gordon and them guys, and they helped us up, helped us out after qualifying on our car, and it, it was really good. And it was a shame Jeff had that problem there because he had his beat. He had to race one. He just dominated all day long. But it's a great win for our Kellogg Chevrolet, and, uh, you know, I'd just like to thank all the people, Rick Hendrick, Jimmy Johnson. My crew chief, Gary Dehart, does a great job every week, and, uh, you know, Vavilene, GMAC, all the people that make it happen for us. Well, I understand that Gary doesn't normally really like this place that well. We heard what you said to him on the last when you took the checkered flag there. Well, I know. We were talking in the truck. And, uh, you know, if we could have got a 10th place yesterday, we'd have been happy and just gone home. But uh, this isn't one of our favorite racetracks. But uh, I'll tell you what, I think we're going to bring this Kellogg Chevrolet home and just let it sit here and bring it back just like it is for the next race. <laughs> that might not be a bad idea. Okay, let's go back upstairs to Mike. Glenn, it's the fifth 1-2 finish for Hendrick Motorsports. The first came in 1988. Kenny Schrader ahead of Jeff Bodine. 1989 at Daytona, Darrell Waltrip winning over Schrader. 1993 at Michigan, Ricky Rudd beat Jeff Gordon. And last year at Richmond, Terry Labonte finished 1-2 ahead of Jeff Gordon. It's the first Labonte Schrader 1-2 finish for Rick Hendrick's team. We'll talk to some more of the drivers who had good finishes in today's race at Pocono when TNN's live coverage continues right after this word. Welcome back to Pocono. Well, now the real race begins. Everybody gets on the road, goes to home, or are off to Michigan for next week's Winston Cup race. We didn't get a, have time to talk to Ted Musgrave when he finished third last week. Let's talk to him as the second place finisher this week. Randy? Well, we're going to start calling him terrible Ted Musgrave because I'll tell you, he's been tough lately. Another great run for you, Howard, and uh, Jack Roush. Yeah, I'll tell you, the Family Channel team's really come together this year. And, you know, like you, you just said it, you know, it's a brand new car, never seen a racetrack before, never tested it, brought it here to Pocono, and no practice on Saturday at all to come out with a second place finish. That just tells you how bad the guys want to win and how hard they work in the shot to make sure everything is exactly right. But not only that, you have to get it right on race day, and I know you chased it and you made the right decisions on the chassis today. Yeah, like I say, no practice on Saturday made a little bit of a guessing game for everybody, but we had our car pretty fully adjustable. You know, we had rubbers, I think, every spring, and uh, the track bar could be adjusted, air pressure. We just worked with every bit of it uh, today and just got the right combination, but need a little more time. Congratulations. The win right around the corner. I hope so. Randy, tell him he's up to fourth in the Winston Cup standings right now. Here's the way they finished today at Pocono. Labonte, Musgrave, and Schrader, the first three. Sterling Marlin and Hutt Strickland swap spots on the last lap. Bill Elliott in sixth, Morgan Shepard seventh. Dale Earnhardt took eighth on the final lap from Michael Waltrip, and Brett Bodine finished in the top ten. Eleventh to Mark Martin, twelfth to Joe Nemechek, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, Bobby Hamilton all on the lead lap, then Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Derek Cope, Steve Grissom, and Ward Burton, twentieth. Rick Mass, Dick Trickle, Bobby Hillen, Todd Bodine, Jeremy Mayfield, and Ricky Craven, Bobby Labonte, Lake Speed, Chuck Bown, and John Andretti finishing 30th. Then it was Dave Marcus, Mike Wallace, Greg Sachs, Jimmy Horton with Jimmy Spencer in relief. And out of the race, Poncho Carter, Jeff Burton, Robert Presley, Dale Jarrett, Kyle Petty, Randy LaJoy, Jimmy Spencer, and Daryl Waltrip. Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, I've caught up with Ray Everham, of course, the crew chief for Jeff Gordon's DuPont Chevrolet. And uh, you were already elected the Miller Genuine Draft Pit Crew Awards. You guys did great work. It's a uh, little bit of a bitter pill to swallow, but uh, you had them covered. Well, you know, it's, I thank God every day. I'm just happy to be part of this team. And when you got a driver, Jeff Gordon's done some great things for us. And, you know, we're going to make mistakes. Everybody keeps saying championship, championship. You know, we're going to make mistakes. And 
we had a good car. We feel a lot better than we did at Dover last week. We had a terrible car. This week we had a good car and we didn't win the race. You know, there's this is a young team. Jeff's a great little young driver, and we're going to have more days. Well, they certainly will. They were awesome. Uh, this is not. This is just a minor temporary setback. You can bet next week at Michigan and every week after that they'll be strong. Congratulations on the award, Ray Everham. Jeff Gordon, third in the Winston Cup point standings, 123 out of Dale Earnhardt's lead. Well, the clouds are rolling in here to Pocono. We're about to roll out, but we'll be right back. Hut Strickland with another great run. He's not feeling well, guys, but he's got a smile on his face anyway, and deservedly so. Well, thanks, Randy. You know, uh, I tell you, I can't say enough for all these guys on this whole entire Quaker State team. You know, uh, the car was off a little bit today, and the engine was off a little bit, and I got off a little bit there at the end. I kind of, you know, uh, I started feeling a little bit sick in the car and what have you, but, uh, you know, it was a great run. I tell you, you know, my hat goes off to all those people. I mean, they've been doing a great job on the pit stops and everything. Can you put it in words what this has meant to you to come back to this series after being out of this sport and people maybe saying uh, maybe Hutt wouldn't be back, and now you're not only back, but you're doing well? Well, I tell you, you know, I can't really say enough. I mean, they, they, these guys give me an awful good opportunity, and, uh, you know, for a driver who everybody rode off and, you know, couldn't drive a lick, uh, you know, hopefully we're... we're kind of reproving ourselves a little bit here today but uh you know i just can't say enough it, it was a great run and uh you know i want to say hello to taylor and tabitha back home and my whole entire family you know back in alabama and uh everybody in Calera. you know just uh it was a good run for us and this is for you guys you know they're happy back in alabama mike you bet randy third straight top 10 finish for hut strickland winston cup point standings look like this dale earnhardt holds on to the lead he came in here leading by 100 points that's chopped down to 77 sterling marlin still second Jeff Gordon still third. Ted Musgrave moves up to fourth. Mark Martin slides one spot to fifth. Bobby Labonte will stay sixth. Terry Labonte moves up to seventh, dropping Rusty Wallace to eighth. Michael Waltrip climbs to ninth, and Bobby Hamilton drops into the tenth spot after 13 races. Well, quite a show, and as usual here in the Pocono zone, sometimes things don't always end up as it looks like they're going to. Mike is so competitive anymore. I mean, the last 15 or 20 laps there, there were five or six cars with any break at all could have made the win out of this thing today. And uh, Ernie, it was fun working with you today. Uh, I think you were in the ball game from the time we started till it was over, and it was a lot of fun working with you. And uh, Mike, as usual, you always do a good job. But he's got his running shoes on. NHRA Today, tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, you catch up on all the latest drag racing news with Steve Evans, Dave McClellan, and Bob Fry. And those guys in the pits that everybody takes for granted, they work their backsides off for the whole race. Thank you much down there too, guys. Well, we're headed for Milwaukee, up there to the Milwaukee Mile to do the Bush Series race. And on Friday night, July 1st, seven kilometer fun run and walk up there. We just got our t-shirts today. We've been challenged by Chad Little's team to run in this, but he's looking to find some ringers so we can walk it. But if you'd like to participate or pledge a donation to help finish Allen Kowicki Park in Greenfield, Wisconsin, call toll-free 1-800-350-ALLEN. If the mailbox is full, try again later in the week, and they'll get you all the information. It's a very worthy cause, and we all want to participate to help honor the memory of the late Winston Cup champion. Well, the traffic begins to file out here. Ernie, they didn't end up much like we thought it would at the start. I tell you, you know, that's, what's, that's what Winston Cup racing is all about. You know, we really couldn't predict who was going to win the race. First of all, we didn't have practice to actually know what was going on. But I tell you, the guys did a great job. All the guys did. And uh, we had a great race. Um, I had a lot of fun up here in the booth and uh, looking forward to the next time. And most of the teams, even with the limited practice time, seem to hit the setup pretty well. Oh, yeah, definitely. They, they had a lot of records to go back on. And we've raced here for a lot of years. You know, it's not a new track. So... So I think uh, that's what a lot of teams did. Well, there's a lot more. Super Truck by Craftsman, Bush Grand National, and Winston Cup Racing coming your way on TNN. So stay with us through the season because you just can't get any closer than with TNN Motorsports. Dale Jarrett, I want to see you go the whole distance Gosh, next yes. race because, I mean, nobody can have that kind of luck week after week. Let's hope not. Folks, we'll talk to you next from the Milwaukee Mile and Bush Grand National Racing there. That's always a thrill as part of Summer Fest up there in Milwaukee. That's Fourth of July weekend. Hope you've enjoyed our live presentation of the UAW GM Teamwork 500 at Pocono. For Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton, for Buddy Baker and Ernie Irvin, I'm Mike Joy congratulating Terry Labonte on his 15th career Winston Cup victory. So long, everybody, from Pocono.